Yeah, pretty much. Okay, okay. So it wasn't it wasn't too rough for you then. I mean, I didn't. No, have I. Drink, so. I had my lines to record and edit, and then I was cleaning up um, Moon and Emblems as well. Oh, so you did Just some of the audio editing for them too. Just to make sure that when uh, Emblene added the uh, the ghost effects and such, right, it was all ready to to go straight away. Yeah, which by the way, that was fantastic work from him. Um, kind of putting mm -hmm. in the ghost effects for both of you guys' uh, voices without without kind of masking the way you naturally sound. Mm -hmm. That's something that can happen pretty easily when you're getting into any sort of audio engineering, and it, it was cool. That was yeah. A great way we are really sound. lucky to have Emblene kind of at our disposal because he's always like yeah i'll help with anything <laughs> yeah and also he's like that's that's what he does for his literal actual real human job so it's like okay pretty nice to have on hand whenever you uh mm -hmm. whenever you need it huh yeah he's he's super great he's having, a great guy having a dope audio engineer mm -hmm. <laughs> whenever you need to do any yeah. sort of big voice project or really any kind of thing good to yeah. have him there he does um he does graphic design too doesn't he uh, a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, Cronus, you do a bit of graphic design. I was looking at some of the stuff on your uh, your website. and Yeah, I uh, actually went to college and got my diploma for uh, for graphic design. And then once I finished, I 180'd and went into voice acting. <laughs> so, okay, that's, that, that's already a great way to start this off. So, like, you went to college for graphic design and kind of 180'd over to uh, to voice work and media and stuff like that? Yeah, it was during the first year I, I found out that um, purely by accident I was able to do like an impression of several different characters. Like, you, oh, hey, you got your Morgan Freeman, <laughs> got your Patrick Warburton, other mm -hmm. sub characters. Yeah. And it was like one of those, I can do this as a job, I think. And I kept pursuing it. And by the time I finished college, I was like, you know what? This is definitely something that I need to uh, dedicate a lot of my time to. That's crazy, and also that that's it's so that's so funny because that's that's the story that so many kids find. They they go to college thinking I'm going to be this, and then wind up taking some weird elective or doing some weird off job and thinking, oh no, this is actually way better <laughs> than what I was going to do. And um, it's it it's it always seems weird to everybody else because I listen to you and I think voice actor or act just actor that that's an actor like that's a dude who can be a villain or a hero or, or just some kind of crazy larger than life character in any sort of medium out there. And to the, to the, to the actor themselves, sometimes they just don't even see that until they, they try it, you know? It's funny because during school and everything, I was purely art. Yeah. I was always put into the art class and things like that. I never did any acting or anything. And then for the past five years, it's just been self-taught kind of, ingesting everything from uh, other voice actors and different forms of medium like watching intently uh, intensely like the the acting in other games yeah it is a it's a it's a learning process um <laughs> acting it's funny especially when in the medium of uh, of, of new media like uh, podcasts video games anime and stuff like that there's there's no real course you can take to just kind of teach you how to get into this sort of thing. A lot of it is uh, very much self-taught and um, very journeyman in terms of just going in and, and figuring out how all of that works. A lot of people get in through radio and stuff like that. So I, I think it's 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 such a hilariously awesome story that you went to school to be a graphic designer and figured out, oh, I sound amazing. <laughs> Let me go and voice things. And uh, I'm glad you did because you got to play... The main villain, and some would say, uh, some would say the secondary, or maybe even primary protagonist or character in a great tale that we all got to see unfold over the last week, with the last word and thorn. Great old video from our buddy. My name is Bife. You got to be dredging your. Still surreal. Still <laughs> like, pinch me. I'm dreaming. Uh, never really thought that. I'd end up having the honor to voice that kind of character in, in particular. I well, remember playing Destiny One Year One, the uh, uh, the bane of many people's crucible <laughs> lives was the thorn and those void kills, man. Uh, Five hundred of them. Five hundred. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, and well, I mean, you nailed it. Like, I would have to say you nailed it. And uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 188 of the Planet Destiny podcast. This is going to be a special one, because everybody here except for me is like an amazing actor <laughs> who got to bring you something incredible this week. And uh, we're going to be taking our time on this episode to go through the process of how that was created. Um Everybody here played a great character in it. This is this is it's, this is going to be weird because I just get to sit here and geek out for the next hour or so as everybody <laughs> gets to talk about their experiences there. But we have some very special guests. Moonvald is joining us once again. You know, she's usually behind the scenes. Been a while, yeah. Hiding, <laughs> just hiding from in my us. cave like a goblin. Here I am. <laughs> she keeps saying that, but you, you, you realize your claim to that is like gone, right? Because people have seen you and they've heard you. Like, plenty now. You can't claim goblin stats. I can be a fabulous goblin. Goblin you card You can't take this Absolutely away not. from me. It's gone. You cannot. <laughs> it's good to have you back. I missed you. <clears throat> we have got the return of Mr. Blessius of Blessius oh, hey. Plays fame. Hi, buddy. How you doing, man? How's it going? That's great to have you back, brother. Great to have you back. Thanks for having me back. Oh, dude. Thanks for joining us. Like, I don't know when they asked you to be on the show. I, I, with the way we usually do things here, it's probably like last two minute. Two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> every time, it's every we are we're the most professional out there. But hey, I'm, I'm super glad you guys were able to make the show. Nim plays is here, of course. Good to have you here. Hey, what's up? And Mr. Cronus, thank you so much for joining us tonight, man. Thank you for inviting me. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's incredible to have you here, and of course, we are going to be talking a lot about the last word in this week's episode. That weapon just became available in Destiny 2 once again, and like I have been gushing over for the past couple of minutes, we had a wonderful, I don't even know what to call it, a documentary, a, an epic <laughs> movie, a, a detailing <laughs> the history between the last word and Thorn, the rise of Shin Malfur, the fall of Dredgen Yor. The Legend of Jaren Ward. And Little Light. I just named all the characters that are in this call right now. I love Stop. it. I love it. Ooh, tier one Bife content. I agree with that, chat. But we have got some of the voice actors who uh, got to play those characters here, including your own Nim Plays, your own Blessius, your own Moonvald, and Mr. Cronus here. And that's where we're going to be spending the majority of this episode on. And oh, shoot, I, don't, I almost don't even know where to start with this because there's so much there. It's a video that Bife put out, some of his best work, if you were to ask me, again, telling the story of The Last Word and Thorn. This is something that he has been working on for years. We were talking about a little bit before the show went live. Um, he basically, he, he, he started this project, what, almost three years ago? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere around that time. So th this is something that has been long in the making. A lot of people have really been looking forward to it. And we finally got to see it brought to life over the course of uh, this week. <laughs> and man, did it come together well. So I guess we'll start this off. Uh, we'll, we'll try to start at the beginning here and asking uh, when you guys were contacted. We'll start with Cronus here. When you were contacted, uh, I, I understand he held auditions for the job. Just you know, kind of send in your work. So how did all that work? How did you get connected to the project? He actually uh, tweeted about it and was like, hey, I'm looking for voice actors and actresses and such. And a member of the community tweeted at him tagging me like, hey, you should do this. Or you should check out Cronus. And I was like, funnily enough, I'm already uh, recording some uh, audition tapes and audition lines to send off. Right. Uh, unknown, uh, unbeknown to me, he actually went to my stream, checked out some of the things that I did and was like, Already listening to your voice, I know that you are the fit for this character. Right on. And like That's a week later, he just DMs me like, "Hey, Dragon Yor." And I, <laughs> knew, I knew the the backstory to him because I, I read the uh, the Grimoire uh, cards, and I was like, "Oh, this is this is a serious like okay, I gotta really give it my all." And then time passed by. We actually, I still have the original record of when I recorded back in 2016. And oh, hearing man. the two, they're completely different. The dredging okay. from 2016 to now, it went through changes. It went through style changes and everything. Really? So what, so what type of changes did you have between your delivery back then and what wound up being in the final project? 
so back then we did live recordings myself and Bife, and he'd read the the lines and i'd go ahead and, and act them out he was looking for a more twisted more kind of take the joker but then add a right. little bit more animalistic behind it and a, a, like a darker tone yeah and then the uh two weeks ago now he was like um i asked him just for a re refresher like what were you looking for and he said considering this will showcase both the hero he was and the villain he became have that very thoughtful very intense kind of there's sincere planning that goes into every action that he did. Yeah. And when you listen to the Razel, there's that kind of, I can't do that. Very really straightforward, very focused on that one goal. But then when you listen to Dredgen, it, it's that more, you, there are certain lines that he's more, I'm hungry. It's hungry. Like that yeah. evolution into the darkness and into where he is that i and you know that's something I, I i definitely felt it's a lot more bestial when we get into the parts where he's reciting his lines as dredge and your and you brought up something there that was that was perfect in that there's a clear difference between razel azir and dredge and your i remember particularly one part of the movie or <laughs> movie i'm calling it a movie that's, that's what it is <laughs> it's a movie it's a movie and it's great it's a movie um and it's it's the part where he's on the moon He's gone into the uh, he's gone into the temple and he's fighting in the darkness and um, it's it's parts where you're talking to your ghost and the delivery of this character he, it's he's always kind of stern and a little standoffish but the way you deliver some of the lines when talking about you know warning the city of what they found there on the moon illustrates I think perfectly what you just brought up the the kind of stern again standoffish but still heroic character that he was before becoming Dredge and Yor, and then I... <laughs> poor Mega. I can sit back and think of, uh, think of the conversation that Dredge and Yor has with the, um, with the bandits. <laughs> and, yeah, it's just... Bonesy, this, yeah. Oh, Bonesy and Mega got bodied, and it was beautiful. <laughs> so did Holtz. <laughs> Holtzman got bodied, too. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, buddy. Um, and, and you're right, there's, there's a clear change in, in tone and delivery there. And if I can, uh, if I can, if I can skip a little ahead in the story... That's something I also noticed with Blessius. Bless, your character of Shin Malfur. I almost wanted to talk to you about this after I watched this a couple days ago. I wanted to hit you up in DMs and be like, so, like, like did, you, did you notice what you were doing here? Because it feels like, to me, Shin Malfur being one of the main protagonists of this story, kind of the, the, the young buck who grows up, has his bit of a hero's journey where he encounters, yeah. the, uh, he encounters heartbreak and becomes the man that he is at the end. There's a clear change. <clears throat> There's a clear evolution in the way you voice the character from the start when you're just narrating things to when Shin is young and he's talking about his third father, you know, the admiration he has for Nim plays. I mean, Dr <laughs> Jaren Ward. And then <laughs> the end. There's a progression from kind of a lighter tone. It's still very stern. You have a very stern voice for Shin, which was pitch perfect, by the way. If, if there was another actor out there that I could compare it to, it's, it was very, like, Matthew Mercer-esque in the, the, the oh. way the line is delivered. You've got a real Jotaro kind of vibe to your, uh, to, your, to your delivery, and it was beautiful. But you definitely start out in a lighter sort of tone, a younger sort of tone, a more hopeful tone. And then by the time we get to the end, with those two shots, just like it, it, was, it was beautifully told, just like with, with uh, Nim when he delivers the line, yours, not mine. There's a clear transformation from that young kid to the yours, not mine. Blam, blam. And then from that <laughs> moment on, when you have your conversation with Moon, you're in that voice just permanently. And it, it really represented to me the kind of, like I said, the hero's journey of, of Shin growing up from being the hopeful kid to the stern protector of the world, the disher out of justice and hands. And I thought... Um, <laughs> Just, just the acting the from start to finish is beautiful in the here. The disher of hands. The disher yeah, of hands. Um, like, uh, like Cronus said, like, like back in when I put my audition tape in, like 2016, like it was way different of a character. Like I, I'm curious to go back and listen to it. I, I hate listening to old things myself. I get really embarrassed, but I have them. 
and I could always send them to you, but like, uh, please. Yeah, like, uh, the thing was, is like, I was on a trip and I had like three weeks of just, uh, straight, uh, just traveling. And I was in the Chicago airport and I got a DM from Bife. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. And I was like, yeah, I would love to. And I, I got to see him at a past St. Jude event, uh, event and he talked about doing this. And I was always just like kind of waiting. And then so he asked me, I was like, yeah, I'd love to. And so there was actually like two things I did for him. Uh, the first one was much more, um, I don't know, uh, grandiose. I kind of did everything kind of like uh, I w went through and he was like, hey, can, can you try to do Matthew Mercer? So I looked up really? uh, like the he looked up. Uh, well, I looked up the line that Matthew Mercer has as Shin Malfur because he actually voices uh, mm -hmm. Shin in the game. And I was just like looking at and uh, tried to do my best like yours, not mine. And like I probably gave him like 100 takes of yours, not mine, yours, not mine, like just progressionally. <laughs> See, yeah. I, I had no idea that, that, that when I brought up Matthew Mercer, I just brought it up. You didn't that was know? Sword. I had no idea. I had no idea yeah, that he had voiced Shin. When you do the mission for Malfeasance, you get to hear him. I, had, I, yeah. I, I mm -hmm. don't have Malfeasance. I, oh, there you it's go. too much Gambit. Oh. I ain't playing that much Gambit. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Make Malfeasance as good as the last word. No, go get it. But no, I had no, I had no idea that Matthew Mercer voiced Shin and that that was yeah. the kind of direction you got. That was just the feel. The, the sort of feel that I got there. So I, I think that's 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 actually kind of hilarious. But it was um, beautifully delivered, man. So so what was the... Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, so I'll ask you the same question that I asked Cronus. So what was the difference between the early incarnation of Shin and what we wound up getting? Oh, um, probably like like uh, what I originally got. Um, I, I didn't really have uh, that much direction. I just kind of like put out what I thought. And I, I just wanted to like do like an evolution of just like uh you know like young boy to you know guy with the last word you know kind of thing <laughs> much less eloquently put no yeah, i mean but i, I think that <laughs> perfectly applies because that's the feeling that you get throughout this entire film it's uh it's a clear progression that shows a, a great amount of range man Go voice more things. I, I, I love listening to you, <laughs> yes. all of you guys. Go <laughs> voice it. more things. I love listening to you. And um, it's, it's, it's just beautiful delivery from start to finish. So, okay. So, and I, I'm assuming, Moon, you and Nim uh, sent in auditions as well, or were you just asked to um, record? Actually, uh, the way I got in was a little bit different. Um, I recorded the poetry stuff for the yeah. music of the Spheres Project. Um, and by narrated half of that. So there were a couple of times when we were just in a discord call together. Um, and I actually got to help him figure out how to read that. Um, but I, I think I mentioned to him, I was like, Hey, if you ever, you know, need anybody to do anything, let me know in the voice department. And, uh, last week, a couple weeks ago, I got a message from him saying, Hey, do you want to, um, do you want to voice Darren Ward's ghost? And I was like, yeah, I do. So, um, and then he ended up asking me if I knew anybody else that could be able. So I, you know, told him about Nam. I told him about Bones and Mega. Um, and I also uh, got Emblaine in on it too. So, yeah, that's how that happened. <laughs> right on. And that's something else everybody should go check out. The poetry for the music of the spheres uh, content that that you and Bife put out was beautiful. It was wonderfully done and wonderfully narrated. Yeah. So uh, there's going to be more. Um, I M Blind hasn't released it yet, but there will be more. So I will leave a link to that in chat and also in the description of the YouTube video. Um, Excellent. Yeah. And um, I think it's about how that's all going, and I'm looking forward to hearing the rest. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, no, it's again. I just M Blind, dude. He's so good at what he does, and he he can't make anything sound bad. In my yeah. opinion, so. it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I think it's interesting that um, so you did the thing, you connected Mega and Bonesy uh, to mm -hmm. to this project. Do you feel bad? Do I feel bad for getting <laughs> Bones and Mega killed? Hell no, I don't. Do you feel bad about getting <laughs> Nim killed? <laughs> Do you understand Nim the knows. irony in that though? Listen, I, I mean, it's it's pretty great. You know, <laughs> his ghost and all that. And then just getting him glocked. That's it's fantastic. It's a it's a reverse situation oh, for Cade. <laughs> your own 
gun. Mm -hmm. And I, and I also, I, I see the, the wonderful, beautiful irony in the fact that Nim gets to get killed by the weapon that he loves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We all know how much of a hive nerd uh, Nim is, so I think it's both fitting and hilarious that he gets bopped by Dredgen. <laughs> he gets to be the voice of Jaren Ward. And, you know, he gets bopped by Dredgen <laughs> yeah. Yor. It's, the um, irony behind that is... I was, funny, fun fact about that, though, is that I originally wasn't supposed to be Jaren. Really? He was supposed to be yeah. a bandit. Yeah. yeah, I was supposed to be mm -hmm. one of the bandits um, that gets bodied by Dredgen in the bar or wherever it was. But when I sent... When I sent Bife the recording, because the line that I was supposed to do was the, he asked you a question. Mm -hmm. um, I sent that to Bife, and fucking Bife is great, because like, he was super apologetic about it just being <laughs> one line. And I'm like, dude, like, <laughs> I remember I'm really content to like, give that. I can interject. I remember he, I was like, go talk to Mega Meg, which when he asked me if I knew of anybody else, and he asked, he's like, do you, do you want a small part in this video? And Mega goes, well, I mean, I would like a big part, but okay, you know. Being mega. <laughs> In typical so. mega fashion, yeah, mega fashion. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I sent him, I sent him the 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 recording, and I, of course, I did it how like I did Jaren's, you know, was more on the grittier side. So I, I just immediately booted up Audacity, and I was like, he asked you a question. <laughs> and I sent that to Bif, and like the next day, he was like, "All right, first of all, thank you. Second of all, if I realized you were able to do something like that, I would have given you a better part." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, third of," and he was like, third of all, how does Jaren Ward sound?" And my only reply was just that gif of that owl that's like surprised. <laughs> 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 and I was like. Yeah, so he sent me over the the uh, the grimoire card, and uh, yeah, that's how I ended up as Jaren. Really? So you got quite the uh, quite the upgrade, quite the promotion. Yeah, from <laughs> Bandit yeah, Number Three in Bar. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty great. Well, right on, man. I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you you got dragged into this and pulled up because I think, like I said, it's beautiful irony, and you did a wonderful job of um of of delivering your line, and I think it's just great that you get killed. <laughs> I know the are. irony. Wow. <laughs> the irony does not escape me. Trust me. I that five hundred dollar thorn is it's just more than enough irony for it. Oh, it'll be a little oh, reminder. I you had that thing. Every time you look at it. <laughs> yeah, it's like I got killed by you. That's great. On the bright side, I bodied Holtzman. Yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't realize that was Holtzman until the, 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 the credits. I was like, what? No yeah. way. <laughs> Take that, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, so that's great. I love, that, um, I, I love that there's a little story behind how you guys all got into this. And uh, I really do hope, you know, I, Bife is obviously going to continue with the, the Allure series for Destiny. There's plenty more to cover. Good lord, uh, everyone knows that there, there's tons of story and lore behind this, uh, the, the world of Destiny and all the kinds of things that we have in it. So hopefully, I, I hope I get to hear all of you guys voicing characters in the future as well, because we it was riveting. might have something going on. Uh, maybe a little, yeah. <laughs> little thing going on. Because it, uh, it, was, it was riveting. That was a riveting, what, hour and like 25 minutes yeah, of my time. Was yeah, good. a long video. Mm-hmm. That I've watched, uh, I think I've watched it twice now, and I am yeah. probably going to do it again. Maybe put it on as like a little bit of a, a audio cast in my head, so I can just listen to that because fantastic work, fantastic work retelling the story. I was shared. Uh, I was surprised that Bungie shared it. I was like, whoa, yo! And the, there was a movies? Forbes article written about it too. Yeah, mm -hmm. did was that. it really? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. Look, all I'm saying is like. All of those lines were nailed. So Bungie, if like in the future you're gonna do, I don't know, maybe like audio versions of some of these characters, <laughs> do it. Get them because that was um, always light in the DMs and uh, <laughs> just, just, get something sorted out. Like, like oh, DMG, do it, DMG, do it, do it, Dylan. Like especially, <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's so many, there's so many different questions I have. And I don't know if we have enough time to go through all of them, but we talked a bit about, you know, voices here. We, we, we spoke about you, Cronus. The way you deliver uh, Dredge and Yor is, is impressive and terrifying and unnerving, all of it at the same time. And um, you all did your, your 
voice recordings together, right? Like you did, you, you did sessions when, say, you were doing your lines with your ghost, Cronus. You were there talking to Moon. Um, uh, we Moon, did. Um, yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. Um, we, we were talking a bit about this before the show that uh, I think that makes it a little bit easier sometimes when you're voicing a character to uh, understand, you know, motivations and all of that kind of stuff when you're bouncing lines mm -hmm. off of somebody else rather than just reading a line and trying to imagine how the other person is going to respond. And I think that really shows. It really shows in the, especially in the scenes between uh, Bless You and Moon and uh, Moon and Cronus. There's there's a bit of emotion there between the two. And uh, <laughs> if I can think of um, Moon when you're speaking with uh, when you're speaking with with Cronus and the boy, I will yeah. not let you have him. Yeah, that was <laughs> the one thing that like. I, I kind of had to be pushed to be a bit more like, oh my god, Emotional. Oh, my guardian just died. But like, yeah, no. Um, the only time I didn't record with anybody was with um, Bless. I just got his line worked off of. So we can do that together. Otherwise, yeah, no. I'm sorry. Stuff with no, it's okay. <laughs> it was it's good okay. though. Uh, like there uh, was there was some there was some emotion there, and uh, I thought that was pretty well delivered for. Uh, pretty well delivered for this project and then oh you want to protect the you want to protect little young Shin Malfer before he becomes a justice slinging rage monster <laughs> <laughs> who paints people on rocks how many takes did we end up doing i think we did oh, yeah. four straight runs mm -hmm. and we did a shotgun run if you yes never heard the the term shotgun run it's basically three takes of the same line back to back to back which and... is weird because he'd read his line once and then I'd read. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so that added a lot to the editing side of things because I was going <laughs> through like, okay, I got to select the final take. Yeah, you had, you had a lot to go through there. Line. There were some I sent to, to um, I'm blind. So like, dude, I don't know which one to choose. Both of these work perfectly. And I was like, <laughs> I, I can't choose. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that to you <laughs> and let you uh, pick that. <laughs> So yeah, how, I was just, ooh, I don't know. That was really fun. What, BBL, sorry? I was going to say, so how was that process? So, so everybody recorded their lines and sent them to you, Cronus? So, uh, Emblein, he recorded his and cleaned his up on his own. Um, I had mine and Moon's. Uh, bless, I never actually heard until the video came out. Really? Oh. Everyone else. Yeah, I just sent him to uh, right over to Bife. Was a wait and see to the video and the final product I was, I was blown away by yeah same here and um i find that really interesting because the lines where where shin is talking to dredgen are <laughs> fairly short it ends in a gunfight but um i thought i thought we I've, I've already gushed over the delivery here all of you guys's delivery was incredible and um it's just, it's, just, it's such an impressive undertaking how much how much recording how long did this take you guys to do um, I don't know. It, it was a couple hours. Yeah, with us it was two, a couple two, hours. Three hours mm -hmm. of recording nonstop. Um, Emblein, he he was the same, roughly three hours of just nonstop. I think he did go back and redo some of the lines, but um, I, I from my perspective, I I managed to get it all done within two or three days. And you, by far, had the most lines in this, like somewhere around, what, 300? 300 lines? Not necessarily uh, different lines. Mm -hmm. It was like 300 takes in yeah. total. <laughs> so to go through, pick out which one worked the best, which one fit the style. Um, so many different variations to really be able to work with. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an incredible amount of work to go through. Telling the uh, the story of these characters, so where you said you played a lot of, of D one and um, you, you knew the basic story of Thorn. So ha had you spent a lot of time within the grimoire and lore before uh, taking this job? Over over the years, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I, I was the I was the individual who spent seventeen hours a day trying to get Galahorn, watching your <laughs> girlfriend Man. get it twice back to back. 
<laughs> from the nightfall, it's just like, <sighs> really? <laughs> but I, I spent a lot of time just kind of perusing through the, the Grimoire cards and kind of learning a bit more because I, I don't think anyone will disagree. Destiny 1, as, as great as the story got, especially with the later DLC, they had so much written down and I, it was it was kind of a shame that they didn't get to really showcase yeah. that in yeah. the game yeah the um the lore behind destiny with the grimoire and the books of sorrow and all that kind of stuff is really incredible it's a really deeply structured uh story that you a lot of people don't get to hear because it's just not in the game and um Thankfully, thank God. That's why we have Bife. That's why yeah. Bife was put on this planet to kind of bring this stuff out there and uh, bring it to life in a in a sort of sense. And um, I think it worked out pretty well in the uh, the case of this Destiny lore bit, the story of the last word in Thorn. You all did a wonderful job of bringing this thing together. Hey, thanks. Yeah. What about you, uh, Bless? Were you were you fully fully aware of who the character of Shin Malfer was before you got on? I uh, I was really a secret little lore nerd yeah so like uh, i remember you know just listening to like vice videos and then it just piqued my curiosity and i would just like go in and just read read and uh yeah yeah i knew uh, mostly about it especially after like 2016 getting like everything from vice i remember him sending me the grimoire cards the first time i was like you want me to read everything <laughs> <laughs> i was like all right and uh yeah, yeah, I, I it was really an honor to be able to do that character. Right yeah, on. you guys did amazingly well. Again, like I Moon was Moon was just like gushing over her recording sessions with with Cronus. I know, I, I, I was so thrilled. It was so good to be able to like actually work with somebody. I was who super intrigued. Knows what they're doing. Mhm. Mm so by the time the, the the video release and I first heard him talk i was like yeah no okay you know that that's you see what i mean that's you <laughs> <are>. <laughs> so that that's yeah, no. that brings up an interesting question so um you all got to see the finished products what were your first thoughts on it well uh we'll, we'll do a round table on this one starting with uh you cronus how do you put it into words um i woke up literally two hours after it had went live and immediately watched it and then i looked at my phone and was like oh that's why my phone is dead because <laughs> twitter blew up with it and kind of watching through and listening to it like for me i i could recall the lines going as as the video progressed like the lines for dredgen they were just coming back to me and that kind of mindset of getting into dredgen i i briefly described that to moon like I had to spend an hour getting into that evil, dark mindset for the character. And that just came flooding right back when I was watching. I was like, oh God, <laughs> dangerous for me. <laughs> but then hearing everyone else's parts, like uh, Bless, never hearing that before. I, I read the cards and I, I read the story, but hearing that put into a more tangible form of medium, it, it just, it, it really kind of made it a bit more uh, surreal and this is a, this is a kind of put my mind in, in the world of, or the universe of Destiny. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Becoming the character there. And uh, <laughs> don't worry, if you, hear, if you hear it again and you start feeling that evil twinge, you'll have Thorn back <laughs> soon. You can just, just oh load God. up Crucible and go body everybody. Um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Ominous. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> and so it begins. <laughs> Literally chills. It's so good. It's so stupidly good, and I love it. I love it. Um, I, I guess moving on. Bless. How about you? How did you feel when you first saw it come together? I was uh, really excited about it. I know the day before it came out, I was like, I was like peeping it, trying to look for it, and then when it finally <laughs> came out, I was ecstatic. I was really ecstatic. Uh, I really don't like hearing my own voice. Yeah, I, I, I get really like, I don't know. I just don't like it. But Cronus, my god, <laughs> dude. Yep. I want you to know, like, I was gushing, like, like when I heard your voice, it was like, oh my god, it was like space 
scar from Lion King space. with Thorn. And I was like, oh my God. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Space scar. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, that is just amazing. And by far the best part of that whole hour and 25 minutes is you, man. 1000%. Hands down. Question. That, that means a lot. Uh, yeah. You're not the first to mention the scar kind of reference Jer- Jeremy Irons and, and such. Your just takes off his helmet. Just a whole ass lion. <laughs> <A> lion. <laughs> Fruit of the tiger people. No. Long live the king. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would I would agree. Like your voice, it, it really sets the tone for the um the greatest, you know, gunslinging story ever told in Destiny. And uh man, like I, 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 having been a lore buff for Destiny for a long time, um, known the character of Dredgen Yor, it occurred to me while I was watching that I had never really put a voice to the character in my head. Same. I had never done it. It just, mm-hmm. I, I, I know of, of Destiny's Darth Vader, but I never really put a voice to it. And so when I was watching that and I hear some of the first lines that you deliver, it's like, that's Dredgen Yor. That's it. Like, that's it. Yep. It's a voice that's so perfectly matched to the character that uh, the two are inseparable now, in my opinion. Like, <laughs> if Bungie wants to, if Bungie wants to maybe do something with this story sometime in the future with these characters, they had better call you first because anybody else who voices this guy isn't going to sound right. It's, it's going to ruin it. It's going to ruin it. <laughs> it's it's going to be. It'll be weird because you you nailed it. It's um. I can't remember when. Um, I believe is it Ghosts and. They did a take on the on the Dredgen uh, and all the, the cards uh, with the, the Grimoire cards. Right. And I remember listening to that initially when Bai first uh, approached me about it. And I was like, okay, they've gone for the very much the gunslinger storytelling. Um, he, he was very much, he sounded heavily like the, the old Western kind of cowboy, with the, you know, the southern yeah. twang. And and I I say this with all respect to to the voice actor of that because it was storytelling wise it was a beautiful piece of audio and, and work. Um, I di- and I didn't want to follow that suit. I don't want to follow going with the gunslingers being like the Western style. So mm-hmm. seeing it into this kind of uh, this uh, Titan who. I, I've seen many comments that Dredgen was a Titan, not a hunter <laughs> yeah. in the past couple of days. And uh, seeing him as this kind of, he's on his own. He he let his ghost leave, or he left his ghost even. And he's very cont- uh, confident with himself, content with himself. He's like, I know what I'm good at, what I'm capable of. I don't need to really... It, I, I feel like to him, he doesn't need to prove to anyone. Yeah. But there was still that essence of why am, I, why am I not getting this recognition? Why am I not being told that I am special? Yeah. Because when every yeah. guardian is special, no one is special. And that's and so a th- it was, it was a, an interesting journey trying to really get into that mindset of the character. And that's a beautiful theme that's brought up over the course of this uh, over the course of this story. And I think there's an important moment towards the end where um, where, you know, your ghost is talking in blind. He's talking about that. He's talking about, you know, the the Titan that Rezal Azir was and the hero to the people that he was. And you stop him like then let him die, because if people find out what I am and what I've done, it destroys that legacy. I thought that was a beautiful way to kind of link back to the whole idea of him wanting to be special and stuff well, like that. Even with like bones doing the bandit in that one grimoire card where he goes specials only special till it's not. Well, it's and not. it just, it just like goes throughout the whole. Yeah. It's a beautiful running theme throughout the, uh, throughout the story that's been told here. And I think um, so many it's, it, this is good on so many levels. Like the, it shows the incredible writing that went into the, um, the grimoire and the incredible delivery that you all brought to it, that there's so many different parallels here between the story and the characters that they all face. Um, I, I, almost... I think as well, it really helped uh, with the way Bife kind of arranged the video. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't go from 
uh, Razel to Dredgen. It started out as Dredgen with the scene and, and the bandits, and you kind of get thrown in a little in the deep end, like, this, this guy's a monster. He's going to kill anyone just for <laughs> talking to him funny. Yeah, and you, you know... So to get that taste of that, this is the character, and then kind of take a step back, like, okay, now let's show you how we got to this. Yeah, that first scene with him really, like, hits you over the head, and he is terrifying. And Open just completely out of control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It really sets the tone. It absolutely does. And I'm so glad you guys brought that up because it reminds me of another theme here in uh, the, the myth and the legend versus the reality of the characters. You're right. It starts out with Dredge and Yor and telling the story of who he is and then gets into the story of how he became that. But there's also a point where we kind of tear down the myth. Fife goes through this beautifully in the uh, in the video where he's talking about, you know, the the, the myth is that Dredge and Yoro was a gunslinger, and a hunter, and all of that kind of stuff. Well, that's not it. That's not actually true. Let's actually go back and show you who he was, a hero of the people, a titan, a mountain among men, who then, through corruption and darkness, and playing around with smelly space shrimp, Nim, <laughs> <laughs> was turned into this absolute monster. And I think... Uh, it, it ties in so well with the old myths of the West versus the reality of the people who, uh, who spawned those myths. And like I said, there's, there's a lot of parallels here. And it's, uh, it's beautifully constructed. Beautifully constructed. Um, Five doesn't joke around. No. Due to serious By any stuff. means. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it shows with the kind of love and effort that came into the creation of this, uh, this, this modern day Destiny epic. It's good stuff. Uh, I, I almost forgot what question I was asking you guys that, that brought us down this road. Um, Moon, you and Nim, was, so what were your thoughts when you first saw the finished product? Oh my god. Um, I was, well, my first thought was, holy shit, this is a long video. <laughs> and then I watched it and I was like, wait, that was an hour? That, it didn't feel like it. To anybody who's watched it, I'm sure most people would agree with me, but it does not feel like yeah. it's an hour and a half long. Because it's so well constructed and so, you know, so entertaining that you you can sit there and listen to it like no problem um but yeah i was i was amazed again i know bife doesn't fuck around but it's it's just on a whole nother level it's incredible the quality in the storytelling and just the craftsmanship a lot of love went yeah. into it absolutely mm -hmm. a lot of love yeah all the love and the passion that everybody put into it and how excited the community was for it you know, it, it doesn't get better than that as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I was really surprised story. how much like the community was like really excited about that. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I couldn't echo that enough. I was like, I was surprised by it. Yeah, I couldn't stop smiling for like days after it came out. I was just, oh, my heart felt so good. <laughs> I, I just feel so lucky to be a part of it, too. Right. Like, yeah. wow. Holy shit. Like I got to, I got to be in this, yeah. And I, I, I still really can't believe that that is a reality. I am, I am so grateful, just so grateful. Yeah, I think that cements it as part of a part of Destiny history. Now, you know, this is the biggest, best retelling of uh, one of the greatest legends in the game's lore. So, bravo, bravo to everybody and here. Got Bungie's approval. Yeah, 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 no. yeah. wild. <laughs> So is, crazy. I was really shocked by that. I was like, what? Because I was like, why is my mentions just what? I was like, oh, I my escaped God. that. I didn't get added. I'm like, oh. actually really glad. <laughs> I, was like, yes. I got a bunch of just fix crucible. I was like, what? <laughs> You're like why? Why? Is that? <laughs> I don't have my thorn yet. I completed the quest, but I don't have There's it. some absolute toxic <laughs> stuff on that one. Yeah. Like, Every bungee tweet, dude. Every <laughs> single one never stops. But, uh, <laughs> I didn't crash out, but yeah. Anyway, congrats! You got the you got the official uh, Bungie experience now. Bless. <laughs> That's what it's like to be anybody who works for Bungie who posts on Twitter. Oh God! <laughs> no, I do feel bad for anybody. Yeah. Like, kudos to DMG, man. He oh, man. he hustles through all that stuff. Yeah, I yeah, I would lose it in like point yeah. five seconds. No Just doubt. The moon earlier, I. Uh... I woke up earlier today with my ho my website host messaging me like, "Hey, uh, what the hell happened? Because you're getting a lot of like phishing emails, virus emails. You're getting like spam to 
hell. You, I was like, could? oh. Oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, huh. Okay. And I guess because in the description, my, my voiceover portfolio website's there. People are going to it and like, oh, he's got his email here. I'm just going to sign him up for XYZ. And like, <laughs> oh, oh, no. Jesus. <laughs> like, oh, great. Take this, dread in your. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, uh, the oh, curse of a nightmare waking up like, oh god, what's happening? Yeah. The curse of publicity start <laughs> strikes again. Ooh. <laughs> Don't do that, people. Stop it. Stop it. What's wrong with you? Kill him in the crucible. Stop not, it. Not in his email. <laughs> 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 um, that's really all the questions that I can think of for this project. So, you know, before we move on to anything else, if there's anything else you guys wanted to say about uh, about working on this project, how you feel about it or anything, go right ahead. And for uh, chat here, later on when we do the uh, the Q and A session. Get those questions ready, baby, because uh, I don't know if we'll have this much star power on the show again for a while. I don't know. I, I, like Again, the only thing I really have to say about it is just how much, you know, I'm just really feeling the love from everything. And I, I've gotten so used to, you know, with managing PD, just kind of like doing everything behind the scenes and not really... Um, directly participating in the content that goes out. Um, so to be able to, you know, actively get to be a part of a production like this um, in such a significant way, it was, it's so rewarding. And again, I, I've said this a thousand times, I've said it already on the show, but I'm beyond grateful. Yeah. Thank you to everybody who's, you know, Brought in the good vibes on that. It, and not the, the outpouring of love and and support for it all has, has been crazy. I'm, I don't know how much time you guys have spent reading the comments and people, their feedback on, on the mm -hmm. video. Yeah. It, it's... We want Moon as our ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would gladly do that. I would love to be. be a My ghost. favorite uh, comment was just shoulder charge him. <laughs> well, why waste time with the intimidation and the shooting? Just show and charge. I know. <laughs> There's a lot of memeing in the comments, which also is very enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. There's one in particular. I don't know if I should mention it for fear of it starting something. Just do I'll it. Bring it. Just do it. Yeah, I know what you're going to say. When Dredgen um, and uh, Moon's Ghost are, are talking, uh, she says. Uh, he never misses. He never misses. Oh, um, yeah, I did hear that. that. Oh, yeah. People yeah. were TikTok doing that. Meme, and it's like, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> he never misses. <laughs> we should reenact that whole line for the whole oh, my God. format. Guess he never but... missed. <laughs> I heard that, Bless. <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. Thank this... you, Bless. Thank you. Uh, Beautiful <laughs> memes. Born from anything. <laughs> anything. Yep. Um, so, so one big thing, of course, you know, Bless here in Cronus, streamers, you guys do the Twitch thing. If you're mm -hmm. not following Blessius Plays, I, what's wrong with you? Stop it. What's wrong with you? Go follow this man. He's hilarious. He streams at crazy hours that keep me up all night, but <laughs> it's worth I'm watching. I'm trying to get a normalized schedule, man. I'm trying. I feel you, man. I feel you. <laughs> and Cronus, you have a Twitch channel as well, right? I, I, I have one. <laughs> 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 Instead, just go follow Bless. I, I, <laughs> oh, go follow no. Conus. No, my schedule has been really, really bad because it's just so much been happening, so much work outside of Twitch. Yeah. yeah, you've been working on a lot of voiceover projects, right? Trying to juggle everything. It's like I, it, it, I always see it as like a, a balancing act. And if you try and equally balance everything, it, it, you're just going to burn yourself out. Yeah. And I try that. I, I do deeply try and do that as much as I, I can. But there are other things where it's like, oh, but this one's doing really well, like voiceover and, and that kind of my career path. So I'm like, okay, I want to put in a little bit more energy and effort into that. But then the other plates kind of slow down. It's like, how do you, how do you keep everything afloat? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like burnout's it. not fun, man. Oh Lord, do we know something about that? It is, uh, <laughs> it is something that can definitely creep up out of nowhere and drain your desire to really do anything. But yeah. um, 
I, uh, I, I, you know, in preparation for the show, I went over to, uh, I went over to your channel and I checked out some streams. I think the last thing I watched was like maybe an hour or so of your Oblivion <laughs> live stream from a while back. Uh, I, I only intended to watch like 10 minutes to, you know, see like, okay, what, what kind of personality we've got here. I wound up spending an hour because I love Oblivion and I got trapped. <laughs> <laughs> First Elder on... Scrolls game that I played. And oh I, man. I always love going back to it. That's a great game. It's so janky and wonderful. I love it. And everybody has weird faces. <laughs> <laughs> Oblivion's a fantastic game. But um, I guess moving on to some actual game talk, this is a Destiny podcast. We should actually talk a little bit about the game this week. The weapon that is at the heart of the wonderful project you all put out this week. Last Word is available in-game right now. Has everybody here had a chance to try and get it? I got yeah. it. Okay, we'll do, so do a hand it. count. Okay, so Bless got I'm it. I'm going to wait for uh, Thorn. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you got it. This oh, man has the right, that, right idea. The last Word for uh, Thorn. Dude, okay, so like when Thorn drops, you have to do a live stream where you're just doing nothing but dredging voice. Like you realize that has to be a thing now, right? I, I actually need to get the dredging title. Nah. We're gonna help you. So, you're on PC, right? I'm gonna yeah, help you do I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna definitely put in many hours of trying to get Oh yep. We got and you, buddy. Hit up the we guy that you like a hair off of that title too. Hit up the guy that you killed! He does nothing but gambit all day. That's all Nim does. <laughs> you need a gambit partner. Hit me up. Cause yeah, it's true. I, How many I, resets I do you have now? I'm at five. Which is oh a gosh. relatively low number. But I know somebody who's at ten. Do you enjoy it that much? I don't understand. <laughs> he I, it I that love much. Gambit. Like I love Gambit. And especially now with, with the new Nova Bomb, the, the Cataclysm upgrade, like it's silly. It's super silly. I got dredging and I was like, okay, done. done. I'm never playing Gamma <laughs> ever again. Don't but I mean, I, I would love. It's. I can't do it. <laughs> I, I can't Breakneck do it. and malfeasance to be able, I'm going to drag you through that. I, I refuse. I ain't playing 40 games again. <laughs> I, haven't I, haven't even yet. Yet. I don't even have that yet. Thank you, Blessed. I'm not the only one. I refuse. The thing is, is I, I, yeah, because after I got Luna's, I was just, like, oh, yeah. I, I, see, need I never a got break. Luna. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I need a break, and I'm still. Re I I just got back from that break, so. Dude, I don't remember. I sat down in one sitting. I got break now. One ten hour sitting. I played forty gambit games, and I was that's like, a, I want God, no. why? Everybody yeah, else that's has too much. it. That's no. way too much. I didn't do it in two. I it is too much. I sitting. felt like garbage <laughs> after I did that. Why? But no. Why did you need it like then? Um. I, I I couldn't tell you honestly. I, guess. I, was, I just got this what thought in my club? head where I was like, I need this gun right now. I need it before anybody else has it. I the not so strong in this one. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to be a shadow of your. She wants to be a follower. There we go. <laughs> I already nah. got it. I already got the dredging. I, I can't. Do, I'm with you, bless. I can't do it, man. I no. not right now. I'll I'll plink it out slowly over the next six months. I remember. <laughs> I, I still remember the live stream when you were getting Malfeasance, uh, Bless, and oh, Bank 5. I was going nuts, man. Bank 5. I was like, <laughs> Bank 5, oh yeah, I was just going nuts because like I was getting so pissed at people that they would just try to get as many as they could. I was like, no, we're in to win. Let's get this meatball spawning. Bank, Bank five, 5, baby. Bank 5. <laughs> that was painful. Yeah, I was going nuts that time. Just yeah. watching that. And then that. it spawned. It's... Yeah. And then, <laughs> then the other team killed it. <laughs> Oh, oh no! And that was like, the, like when it came out too. Like I was like, "Holy crap, it's out!" Yeah, yeah. I was, I was really upset. When, about that. when like the spawn rate was like non-existent, three percent, point five. <laughs> I remember playing with Adam. Nem, do you remember mm -hmm. this? We were playing with Adam, and we were trying to get the meatball. And I was like, "Is this normal?" Is the, and he's like, "No, we're just really unlucky." And I was like, "God damn it!" Yeah. <laughs> so then I just went for it. Yeah. Those are gonna kill me then, because my first match in Gambit, I got the quest. Of course you did. You're dredging your. Meanwhile, <laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> I was like, "Hello." I just Dude. came back to Destiny after taking a short break, and I was like, "What the hell's this?" I kill it, and then <laughs> popped up. I'm like, "What the hell was that?" And I pull up my inventory. I'm like, "What is this?" Oh, and then that's I was so like, perfect. Oh, oh, oh. and. Now I still haven't got it because I'm on that last part where you got to get all the moats and yeah. get it, go to get it. 
Get Drifter it. was looking at you like, like boss. <laughs> and I it's just like I remember I was playing when the first third like when the first curse full curse week came out and on Reddit they they were reporting that the meatball was spawning. I started playing, I think it was around 11 in the morning. And it was one o'clock in the morning. I literally just nonstop gambit. I didn't see it once. Oof. I was so pissed because like it just it, it didn't even spawn or and like I didn't see other people like get it. But like it took until the next day because I wanted that gun so yeah. bad, so bad. It took and I think the following day it was a, another few hours until finally the first meatball spawned and dude, like my heart just sank to my stomach when that thing spawned. I'm like, no, we're killing this thing. <laughs> like I just remember invading consistently once the prime evil spawned. Cause I'm like, no, we're not losing this thing. I want this thing dead. And then finally we ended up getting it, but it's so incredibly stressful. Yeah, it was. And congratulations. You're a true follower of your, you're a true shadow. <laughs> <in them. laughs> Dedicating yourself to just erasing other guardians so they wouldn't rob you of your gun. <laughs> yeah, you got the title before like most people. Oh, you got like, it quick. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, as far as I'm aware of, within like the the streaming community, Ch Cheriona got it first, mm -hmm. and then T Rex, and I can't remember. I know somebody else got it, and then I remember I got it like that week, that same weekend, because all it I needed was malfeasance. Took me forever. I have been working on it consistently since it came out, and I got it like a couple days ago. So if that tells you anything, <laughs> I got really hung up on a couple of the triumphs. But Jesus Christ, dude! Yeah, no thanks. I'm still upset that they haven't they haven't uh, addressed fast fill because that metal is just ridiculous to get. Which one is that? You have to collect 15 motes within what seems like five or three seconds. Oh, it's five like that, or yeah. three. <laughs> Because I I know for a fact I've gotten it I've gotten fifteen modes in less than like ten seconds and you still haven't got and that's the mm -hmm. only gambit medal I need to complete the entire triumphs for it and then season of the drifter is going to come out and that's still going to be the fucking last medal that I need. I will say just get a team of four in there and be like guys I have to do some stuff yeah. and just coordinate but with I everybody have... that's you cannot do that with blueberries. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hello. I'm right. You're here. on PS4. <laughs> I play on PC. When was the last time you were on PC? I think last time you hit me. No. Which was a while ago. <laughs> Which was a while ago. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, I just can't spend that much time in Gambit. But I can spend that much time in Crucible. Bodying people with my shiny new last word. I love it. That's where it is. <sighs> it's a super fun gun. Cronus, have you gotten it's... a chance to get it? I haven't had the chance to, no. I need to... Uh kick up my my destiny game at the moment right on um well i mean it's it's, it's the quest is out there now and uh, it doesn't take that long to complete it's like maybe maybe well it depends on how how you handle the pvp part maybe an hour or two uh, to get that done it took me four and a half hours really yeah what step huh or uh caught you up uh crucible <laughs> crucible uh i wasn't like the jazz and got 98 percent done in one game <laughs> Ninety eight percent in one game. I don't know if that's true, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's they used to by virtue. Of <laughs> yeah, it probably just did. <laughs> chaotic energy. I think is what pulled him through that. I mean, you said Telesto, same thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it done in four games. The first step. I don't know. I can remember. I don't know. I'm such a garbage PvP player too that I don't understand how I didn't have a more difficult time with. <laughs> Sometimes you just get lucky, you know, with matchmaking and all yeah, that kind I of stuff. So. Or you're just good and you have to accept that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. The medals took me a while, though. The medals were kind of... I, I thought the medals part was... I thought it was going to be a little bit more frustrating than it wound up being, because I think Bungie, they knew with the last word quest coming and having two PvP steps, I think they threw everybody a bone with Mayhem. Mayhem, um, yeah, that's what saved me for sure. And the metal oh, yeah. step is certainly easier in Mayhem, in my opinion. Oh yeah, just use your teammates as bait. Let them die from somebody just who wants to solo run behind them and let them. And... Mm -hmm. Got them. But um... I actually had the hardest time in Mayhem for that stuff. Really? Yeah, I tried going into Mayhem and I was just making no progress. I know a lot like, of people 
said Rumble was good for that too. I just I, I went never. into quick play and I just played mega passively. Yeah, like I would just I would follow you. blueberries like just directly behind them with with my fusion rifle, just waiting for them to get bodied, and then I'm like, bloop. <laughs> That's smart. Yeah, because yeah, so, I mean, in that 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 way, I got it done like super quick. But I tried the fir- my first mentality was mayhem. Let's go. No, not not for me. It didn't work out for me. Yeah, I mean the the first the first step is probably the hardest in the quest. Just getting that. It's 50 kills, at, the, at bare minimum, 50 kills to get 100%. But, of course, you get 2% for a kill, and you lose 1% for a death. So if you kind of get into a game where things spiral, you can lose a lot of percentage real quickly. I yeah. was um, yeah. chatting it's with some bad. people. I kind of hope they do the similar thing that, like they did with Thorn originally. Me too. Me too. Me too. The four Large kills. And if I, was it if you got killed, your percentage decreased with that? Yes. Like 5%? Yeah. It was like five percent, yeah. Like I think there was, um, there was the void step for Thorn, which was like you had to get five hundred void kills, which was ridiculous. Uh, and there was so there was some PvP step that was like that. You're right, Cronus. And um, got that quest with Titan in D1. Ooh. Same, <laughs> same. I'm right there with you. Mm-hmm. Right there with you. But a lot of people, what, a lot, what I've noticed that a lot of people aren't realizing it is that. This, these steps for the last word quest are essentially the same as the yeah. thorn quest back yep. in the one minus the void kills thing. So this is not a quest for the last word. It's really yeah. not because you're you're in there chasing uh, the, the the hive weapon master mm-hmm. and car, and you get killed by a prototype thorn. Like that, that gun that he's using, it's literally called just Proto Thorn. You are you, yeah. right now that quest you are building Thorn, and you end True. up with the last yeah. word because Shin's like, uh, I see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, stop it. <laughs> yeah, he calls you a punk about eight times. You know. Yeah. I don't understand how the last word pops out. Like, like I get it, but I don't like like it. Just it just it's just like T posed there. there. <laughs> yeah, T yeah. posed. <laughs> It's I think it would have been cool if you heard like, just like yours, not mine, or something. I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Matthew think... Mercer. Bless <laughs> is. <laughs> I, yeah, I think lore wise, what's supposed to be happening there is like he's giving it to you, like he's transmitting it to you or something, because he's been watching you throughout this quest. Yeah. And but it's like maybe. floating. It's, it's so just, weird. It's so weird. It is. It's just literally. I hate just... those bastard acolytes. By the way, <laughs> even after I figured out that there was like a pattern to that shit, I still had the worst fucking time <laughs> but, you would be surprised so many people like had a rough time with that i was watching fallout try to get it and he's like what am i supposed to do here oh, yeah i don't know i had the reaction here. time of like a half dead goldfish <laughs> or something i don't know what the problem is yeah i thought it was i, I thought it's fun with mouse and keyboard too oh man it's so uh, good. yeah it is i bet it good. is <laughs> It is. Uh, that's actually been a point of uh, contention amongst the community for the past <laughs> couple of days, with uh, people who have noticed that the the last word performs a little bit differently on PC with mouse and keyboard than it does with controller on console. Uh, whereas mm-hmm. on console, don't ADS with the last word. That thing's gonna don't be in it. the sky by the time you finish shooting. And you can't aim down sights on PC. You, you really can. can. Yeah, it's it's easier, and uh, that's actually you know for the people who have it here. Have you? Um, you guys gotten some chances to play around with the last word? How are you feeling about it? It was fun. I feel about the same way that I did in D1, which is meh. Yeah. It's, you know, I don't have a huge attachment to it, but I'm glad I enjoyed it. Yeah. I got it, and it went into my all. <laughs> I have played around with it a little bit. Mm. That's, it's definitely How my many primary. How you uh, the math show? Yeah. I remember she tried so hard to get it on D1 on PS4. And the one time we did Nightfall, she gets it on Xbox instead of... Uh, <laughs> oh. That was after trying for like, I think, two years straight. Oof. RNG. Cruel mistress. <laughs> what a cruel, cruel mistress. Mm. Yeah. I um I spent a lot of time with the last word over the past couple of days. I was able to get it within the first few hours because uh, I just play a lot of PvP. And uh, I love it. 
I love it. It's become a new go-to primary for me because uh, I loved the gun in D1. I was one of those. <laughs> I was one of those uh, last word scumbags back in D1 year one with the ADS 111s two tapping people across the map. Um, yeah, same. And I've I've always loved I've always loved the mystique of a, a weapon that you just uniquely hip fire. I love the mm-hmm. I love the the air the aura around it the Western vibe and um, I think it's pretty good. I think they brought it, it's in a pretty good form here in Destiny too. I'm actually really impressed with how good it feels on uh, on PC to just run around and blah 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 blah. And we ja- we actually just put a review video up for it. Um, and uh, quick version, I think it's pretty good. It's definitely a close to mid range weapon. It performs pretty well. It's uh, got a pretty darn good time to kill, and. Uh, I, I, I think I think it, it bodes well for the future. I was worried that they were going to kind of bring back the last word and it was going to perform sort of the way it did in like year two and year three of D one, which was not very good. So I'm happy that mm-hmm. it's um, yeah. I'm happy that it's a strong performer here within a specific range in uh, D two, and it gives me real hope for what they're going to do with Thorn next month because that's another one. That's that what I'm, I'm waiting for. <laughs> I hope Crucible's fun again. I don't yeah. know. Like, I don't know. I feel like there hasn't been really any Crucible updates in a long time. Yeah. We actually, we just got our, what, our sandbox update this or this last week. The first we've gotten uh, since Forsaken came out, I want to say. Yeah. They've made so. a while. It's been a while. And um, I, I like some of the changes that they made. I think certain auto rifles feel pretty good right now. The, um... The, the rapid fire frame autos feel super good. Who here has played with the scout rifles? Like the viced ones. Holy yeah, Bryce, oh, you had a video yeah. about that. Yeah, like literal laser beams, just like tum, 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 tum. I yeah, what is it the scorpion? Uh, I used the uh the uh Frost Myers hex. Oh man. yeah. Mm-hmm. Iron banner. Yeah. And literally it's just a laser beam. It's um yeah I I I say that the uh, the vice scout rifles are the best auto rifles in the game now. <laughs> it's, that's, yeah. that's they've got virtually no recoil. They kill. Super Remember when they now. sucked? Yeah. <laughs> no more of that nonsense. So uh, those are super good. So I, I like that we had some yeah. sandbox changes. I think Crucible's a little bit better right now. But um man, I'm ready for Thorn and like. I, I enjoyed the last word quest line. I think it's pretty cool. I think they stuck to their guns with making some fairly difficult quest steps. I hope they do that with Thorn too. Like like Cronus said earlier, oh, I, I hope yeah. I hope Thorn is gonna be a rough quest just like it was back in D one. Be disappointed I think that was the, the fun behind it though. Yeah. It was that grind that as uh, ball breaking as it was, it was just so much fun. It's rewarding. It was. It was a trophy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I still, I can still remember it um, clear as day. Thorn was the first exotic I got. Uh, cause no way. I, yeah, I got lucky, like, literally right after I hit level 20 and reached max level, like, did a couple daily bounties, and it was the first of the uh, exotic bounties that dropped from the bot. So I went off to do that, and boy, was that a mistake, because, whew, that quest was rough. But, um... <laughs> I got it done, and I just remember the grind going through that, whether it was the void kills, the PvP part. Uh, and then finally, finishing up that strike at the end where you take down uh, Jayor, the unwed. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah! Which was such a rough, such you a rough You better not fight. kill that ogre! Don't kill that, you better kill that witch, but if she comes out on the third ad wave, you had better yeah. not kill that ogre before you kill that witch, or else mm-hmm. rest in peace, you start over. And um, you're right, it felt like a trophy. When I got this thing, I was like, I just worked for an exotic. Are all of them going to be like this? <laughs> and uh, it was bad for a little while, but little did I know, three months down the line, it would become the most busted weapon in year one. <laughs> yeah. It was, I hope it's busted when it comes back, man. I hope it's too. not like that, like the nerf thing where like, it, it, they made it so like, like a throwback. No point like, to like, hey, remember torn. when this gun just tore through everything and anything? Yeah. 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 I want it. Oh man, I want it. And I've got hope because the last word came back in a pretty good form where it's good. It's not necessarily OP, but it's um it's definitely a viable strong option for PvP. And uh they've had a pretty good track record for some of the D1 exotics that they brought back. Thunderlord came back in a fantastic form. Last oh, word's yeah. back in a fantastic form. Um, Sleeper Sam. 
sleep, Sleeper became a meta. Whisper, which was Black Hammer back in Queen Breaker. Queen Breaker. You know? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Where's the new content? Wait, where's the new exotic? Shut up. Where's the, where's the new? I'm so nostalgic that I don't even care. Stop wasting <laughs> money and, and, and resources on all the content, Bungie. <laughs> I always wondered if D3 is going to be more RPG D1. I hope, I so. hope so. I hope so. I am. Oh, I would love that. That would be fantastic. As somebody who's more invested in like the story and the lore and the setting and the environment, I am. You know, that would be a dream. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's interesting Sweet. though. At the start of D two was like you lost everything. everything. <laughs> All of those weapons gone, and then <laughs> fuck you. It's like hey, you got this weapon back, but in a totally different way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Hey, we we kind of story to getting those. Yeah. We, we yeah. you know we went through your old vault. We robbed, we, we robbed all of your exotics. And uh, here's Found a quest to get it back. Yeah, of the old tower. So <laughs> I, I, uh, my thorn there. Oh, no. No, <laughs> I, why is my stuff gone? I had it stored in the reef. <laughs> we had vaults there. Mm. Somebody so. Right I'm not sure if you guys um, follow um, one of the senior design leads on Twitter. His, he goes by uh, Roderick Weiss is, is his yeah. name. Um, so he recently took to Twitter to ask a really cool question. That, uh, for all you diehard D1 fans, if you can bring a full set of gear from D1 to D2, what would it be? Full set? A full set of gear. Full set. Uh, year one Priles gear? Mm. Yeah, is it year one or two? Is really good. Whatever, whichever one had the jackal. Yeah, that was a year yeah. one. That, that was year one. Okay. Year two yeah. was the Beatles. Stuff. Not, not the snake one. I wasn't a fan of that one. The jackal. Yeah. That yeah. The warlock. That's what um, I would do. Mm-hmm. So he goes on to say that, you know, that if we enjoy reprise gear sets, so it looks like they're, go- they're looking at bringing back some of the old Destiny 1 gear set back. Um, because he he goes on to ask, you know, would you be okay with more gear that is reprised instead of brand new gear? What are your thoughts? Uh, and the last update he had to that was, I'm seeing a lot of Vault of Glass and Crota stuff. So let me tell you, man, if if they bring back my Crota gear, I'm about to lose my shit. You know, <laughs> the D1 Year One. Iron Banner Titan gear. Yeah, I, can, yeah. I will I'll, never make my Titan look that good ever again. Mm-hmm. A lot of honestly, like a lot of the the Destiny One Iron Banner sets are far superior. superior. Than oh, the stuff oh, that yeah. we've seen in D2. The Year Two Titan one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Iron Banner gear used to be the absolute pinnacle, in my opinion, of some of the armor sets that were out there. And I love the way it evolved into like the night set when like uh, a, the the Rise of Iron came out, and suddenly all the Iron Banner gear was like this medieval knight nonsense. I, that is I've, my jam, dude. Yeah. Oh, then that's, that's my aesthetic. Where, <laughs> it had the ornaments where it was on fire. Yeah, yeah. What was that, Kratos? Which which year was it when they had the the wolf uh, hood for the hunter? Year three. That was yeah. Three. No, no, that was that year was, two. That was Taken King. Was it really? That was yeah. year two. Yeah. That oh, yeah, when that right. came out, and obviously Rise of Iron with the uh, the artifacts for the different Iron Lords, that was after the Radagast video came out, and I did nothing but rep Radagast on my Hunter. That's awesome. I had all the different things, uh, like the armor pieces and everything. I was like, "This is my Hunter is now a Radagast." <laughs> <laughs> as well, that's as really cool. Yeah, yeah, you know, I am. Um... I definitely. What's the way to put this? Oh yeah, yeah oh, my God. There it is. oh, the king's fall. Oh, no. oh my gosh, that's what, what was the name of that shader? Oh yeah, it was like oh, oh it was like one? midnight talon or like no, 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 no. It was something sunset? Oh, oh, the fiery sunset one. Um, oh man, chat will figure it out. Chat will figure it out. Anyway, yeah, look, though. there we go. There it is. That's I have it. it. I don't have it like in my vicinity right now, but I have actually I have all three of them. Not the Light Me on Nemesis one, but the one yeah. of the the Warlock with the full Iron Banner gear with Thorn and Celestial Nighthawk and that Wolf one. That oh, was the coolest man. freaking Hunter cloak ever. Ever. That is glorious. Yeah, ever. Hunter had Thorn, right? 
Is it irony or <laughs> the hunter <laughs> had the, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> A little bit, a little bit of irony mm-hmm. there. And that I miss that. I miss the kind Hungry. of armor sets that we had back there. Yeah. Um, and and I'm definitely of the mind that I, I have no problem with them bringing back old stuff. I have no problem with it. Uh, I think there was, a lot of, there was a lot of good back in D1, um, design-wise and whatnot. I also would hope that they're making new stuff, and I think it would be weird to think that they aren't. But I have yeah, no, I, no issues with them bringing old stuff back. Yeah, definitely. I don't ever think there's going to stop just being new stuff completely, and they're just going to go, well, we're just going to bring everything else old back so we don't have to, you know. No. It's the old stuff. I'd love to see them old take stuff to Eververse. a lot of the, the old, old stuff, stuff to Eververse. And then um, the same amount, like the same quantity of new mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. It's like for the start of year three, it's like, hey, bang, there's just so much. It's like, how, for anyone that's like a. A completionist trying to get every single thing it's like oh i gotta grind yeah for yeah, good luck <laughs> the it's the carrot it's the carrot on the stick and because um, dead i was just because there was no no gear refresh with season of the uh forge yeah there was no real gear refresh and i and i always thought that that would be a um maybe i shouldn't say easy but i always thought that that would be kind of a you know a, a good quick way out for them to you know add in new gear every season when they don't have something brand new to bring in just bring in some of the models and, and armor sets from D1. I, I think some of those armor sets were amazing looking. Shoot, to answer the question... Like that palindrome? The, palindrome! Give me the palindrome! Mm. Give me my IS Luna! <laughs> I mean, there's so many awesome weapon frames and whatnot that were left behind in D1 that could really be used to pad out the, um, to pad out the number of items to chase here in D2. And uh, yeah. maybe that'll be something we see, um, we see moving on into the future. But to answer the question of what armor set I'd love to see... That's such a rough question because there were so many good ones. Like any of the raid sets from uh, Age of Triumph were incredible. The yeah, Vault of the Stage. Yeah, like the Vault the of Robot Glass. Robot legs, baby. Robot the, legs. The Titan Wi Fi. Oh, signal. the Vex leg. Yeah, oh, the Vex for leg. The the, oh. I remember uh, when that Vex leg came out. There's a Grimoire card that introduced that guy on uh, Asher. IO. Asher. Asher. I was like, Eris Morn was saying goodbye oh, Eris, to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I was like, that's a cool way to introduce him. Yeah, but. and they, they like all of those armor sets were so gorgeous and beautiful, and it, it's kind of uh, it's always funny to to look at that and compare that to say like the prestige armor for uh, some of the Leviathan stuff, and it's like, no, no, no. Now nah, give me back my Wi-Fi signal. <laughs> give, give yeah. me back. Oh yeah, yeah the. T- give me and back not to my... mention that that armor was animated too. Yeah. 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 Didn't the warlocks have like a little, little tendril thing? Yeah, they yeah. had tendrils yes. on the arm. Like the the. Like the harpies, one? like the harpy one? tentacle thingies. Yeah, mm-hmm. the gorgons, yeah. the gorgons, mm-hmm. and um, gorgons. shoot, even thinking of the wrath of the machine when you get that uh, prestiged up and then the Siva oh, yeah, starts glows. activating. And you can on change it. the glow. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh man. My biggest complaint with Destiny Two is D One refreshed like the look of those vendors so often. It's just like I was never a big fan of like, hey, here's a uh, nameless midnight. And here's Nameless Midnight. <laughs> and here's Nameless Midnight. Yep. Like, how many better do you like? Do you like orange and blue? I sure <laughs> hope you do. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Isn't the Vanguard gear right now a version of the Osiris gear? The um the Mercury gear that Brother Vance has? Is it? I th- because like I, th- be. I know the helmet is for sure. The only difference between the helmet that the Vanguard has right now is it doesn't have the spikes right. on the mm-hmm. top, but it still has like that singular eye thing, which is also kind of okay. weird. Because like, there's a lot of armor sets that were left back in year one too of D two. There's a lot, yeah, that they weren't brought over. Like I'm still trying to figure out why in the world we don't have like some of the faction gear available. I know. In, uh, in for or why we grinded first of Osiris. Yeah. I know where you're what going with this, Nim. Go ahead yeah. and get the salt out. Go ahead. Uh, I know where you're going. Why, why we grinded the uh, solstice of a, of a hero's <laughs> armor and he immediately left it behind like 30 yeah. minutes into Forsaken. That was painful. Like all that work we put into the the, ma- the masterwork version of like the solstice <laughs> of heroes gear and then it's just worthless a day later. Ooh. I remember I, I was... that one coming. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was playing it. 
with with TBL. It was a few weeks ago, and I was wearing I was wearing the cape, and he didn't realize it was me. <laughs> and his reaction was like, "This man is wearing the solstice of heroes <laughs> cluck." And I was like, "Dude, I grinded it out. I'm gonna wear it." And he's like, "Oh, that's you." I'm oh like, yeah, no, we. <laughs> oh no, we. Yeah, that's um. Man, that that's one that they definitely needed to bring forward, and I see some some people in chat talking about it. I think uh, mm-hmm. Nim, one of your biggest complaints was them not having a vendor reset when season of the Forge started. I think that was a huge yeah. oversight. Like it's so weird to yeah. go back out into the planets and find that they haven't changed their stock in like <laughs> six months. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they haven't seen a refresh in six months, and planetary vendors haven't seen a reset since. September of last year. Yeah, there was we, we just I think launched that's because the majority of the teams now are working on the the next title. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I do believe so. For Which sure. before we move on to questions, or at the end here, um, I I think it'd be a good idea to get everybody's thoughts on some of that because, of course, you know, Bungie split from Activision, and mm-hmm. the future of Destiny is uh, is 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 kind of an unknown for us right now. We know that they're going to continue making content for this. I do believe that they were scheduled to have another big release later this year, like either an expansion or we were going to be learning something about D3. I would be willing to bet that's probably been pushed off. And once they finish this annual pass content, uh, we really don't know where we're going. Maybe they'll have another <laughs> annual pass with little releases. So maybe we'll do another round table here and uh, see what you guys think about that. Um, so what do, what do you think Bungie does? Do, do they push D3 back another year or two? Continue with like the annual pass situation? I'll go first. This is my theory. <laughs> Everyone's like, my theory is they're going to do this annual pass. They're going to deliver everything on the annual pass, and then that's it. That's it. And and that's it. And I bet at E3 they're going to announce Destiny 3 2020, and then you're just going to be destinyed out for a year. That's my theory. So you think? Um, so you think we wait till E3? They announce D3 in 2020, and uh, from that moment on, like the, they're not working on any major content packs for D2. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would put money on that, and because that. like you get one that's technically, um, like there's one in like late summer, right? Yeah, uh, on the calendar. <laughs> Pin number. And I bet that's the last one, man. I bet that's the last one, and then that's the last deal that they have with Activision that's public. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Till man. the following September, you think? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I just feel like that's, that's going to be it. Or not. The last hurrah. And, like, they might update it. But, like, by January, are you gonna pl- it's like, are you going to be playing that? Hmm, yeah. I mean, do you think they'll somehow, rep- like, reprise old content, content. And from D1 I and move it like, forward to kind of just that, keep people playing? Like, the complete package? I think that would yeah. be really cool. Like for like you know winter, like it's like mm-hmm. the complete packaged and like, hey, you want vault of glass for the third time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, actually, yes, actually, yes. I do. <laughs> Give me vault of glass at sixty FPS, please. Yes, please. Yeah, no, actually, yeah. I, you know, I, I think, um, I, I've been terrified of it, but I think you might be right, bless. I think, I think that's what they do. There was some speculation that they might move off and maybe make another uh, another bit of annual pass content where they have three smaller releases. And I don't know if they've got the the manpower for that anymore because you know High Moon and uh, Vivi. Once Penumbra comes out, that contract is ended. So I, yeah. I, I think you might be right that is we just go through the annual pass content we have now. E three they announced D three in a year or so, and then. Maybe they just take the smaller team they have keeping D2 up to date and start pushing in. Maybe that's when we start getting more of that D1 content. Maybe that's when we start getting some of that stuff from uh, year one of D2 that's been left behind. And um, I'm a little worried about that because that would be like a full year with nothing to really uh, nothing to really refresh Destiny unless they really go hard on yeah. porting old content over. Yeah. Or I the thing that it could work in their favor with like games like Anthem and Division Two, it's just like yeah. they, they just take the road of like, hey, you know, you've had a lot of us for a while, you know, and like they go off like that's I, I don't know I think that's smart marketing because yeah. it makes you because like one you have the hype of no Activision it's just Bungie two there hasn't been anything from them for a while what could they be cooking up their sleeve I don't know. And I think that's one of the biggest things there. I think one of the biggest benefits there, because there is there is good in this uh, this sort of uh, hypothetical we're going through. I do think that they should take all the time they need to make D three. And um, yeah, yeah. 
unfortunately, having those resources there to continue making live content for, for D2 is a drain from that. There will always be a live team that's going to keep D2 up to date, and that will probably be the team that's going to be converting old stuff to, uh, to D2 content. And I, mm -hmm. think, uh, I think you might be right. I think that might be how they drip feed and keep things going while they, uh, the main team takes the hands off and focuses completely on D3. Yeah. If it means that D3 is going to be good, I would be okay. It's going to be a little bit difficult for, you know, that year. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows what's <laughs> actually going to happen? Yeah, we've got no yeah, I definitely think they can last a year if they were to, you know, bring back old raids. And then, True. Like, um, Prison of Elders. Yeah. How that would fit into the story at the moment. <laughs> with Forsaken and how that went there. Slap it in the infinite forest. Make it a simulation. Yeah. Don't make it go back. Well, to Varix Mercury. is technically not even there anymore because he's off doing he's in hiding for initiating all the offensive Forsaken. Bring back for 2019. <laughs> yeah, I think there's definitely things they could do to drip feed out and, and keep community interest going, but uh you're right, Bless. They, there's other things to play. Division's getting ready to come out, and that's looking like it's going to be a juggernaut in this um, in this specific gaming category. Anthem, of course, is dropping, and there's plenty of other things that are going to be coming out over this year. So uh, we'll have to see, because we really have no idea. No clue. Yeah. It'll be interesting, nonetheless. All right, that's pretty much They've been secretly working on something that's like, hey, for the final year, we put a lot of effort into this, and can I have another cool. Rise of Iron? Yeah, it could be. I remember Goth was like, okay, year one, Destiny one was like learning baby steps, kind of getting into it. Year two was a, okay, we've learned. This is a statement. And then year three was like, okay, here's the, uh, the grand showcase. Finale. Which, it, it was a grand finale with uh, Age of Triumph. I thought Age of Triumph was a fantastic little mini release awesome. at the end. Rise of Iron. And they might do the same thing. You know what? They, they might just wind up being sort of another Age of Triumph situation where they blast us at the end of D2's lifespan with a bunch of really awesome in-game content. And I think that would be great. I think that would, that would be... I think they do have enough, enough content that they could pull from to, um, to keep them going for about a year. Maybe some on and off periods. It'll be real interesting to see what goes on there. Very much so. All right, that's all the questions I had for you guys. So, all I can think Here of. Here we are. That's it. At the that's, end of that's the it. show. That's the end of the show. So we'll take some time <laughs> to uh, to answer some questions from chat. Usually we have Dan collecting these throughout the show, but he's off watching a foosball game or some such nonsense. But uh, there's a football about, game today. Oh, it might be a the big game. maybe you know like little league or something yeah. like that. <laughs> little, <laughs> little powder puff game going on. Welcome back, Nem. Um. Yeah. Sorry. Not a question. But somebody in chat said, man, I'd like to be evil in Destiny at some point. You know, with how Forsaken <laughs> went and like the moral, you know, gray kind of area we sort of flip into a little bit there. I can see, I can see something happening. I mean, what do you think they're going to do with Aldrin? Is yeah. That that cuts yeah, happens? that's the other thing. Yeah. And it's hard to say. Um, but I would love to just be an asshole. <laughs> like, <laughs> pull on dredge and like, oh, that'd be so fun. So there's, um, there's a really good video. Yeah. Oh, there's a re really good video that Mylan, uh, did not too long ago talking about like the possibility of guardians tapping into that darkness power. Cause there's just, just you know, this whole thing with like balance, you know, there, there can't be, you know, light without shadow and yeah. vice versa. Also, for the lore nerds out there, they're going to know about Ulantan. So, yep, there's another one. So, I watched that video from Mylan, and uh, it shows a good, a good possibility of that happening in the, in, in the future. Right. Yeah, and I mean, you know, even with the little storylines we've been going on with uh, the Drifter here, something's clearly happening there. Like, we're, we're, we're building... Weapons that are not so nice to wielders <laughs> of the light. That's, that's kind of what Thorn and Malfeasance are. And um, so I, I think I think maybe sometime in the future, maybe when D3 drops, um, 
that's promising to be more of an RPG esque game. I do believe they already there've already been statements made about that. I who knows? Maybe there'll be an option to to have some some dark guardian kind of stuff going on there. World PvP, Dragon baby. That's what I want. World Oof. PvP. Man, oh, it's a dark yes. like like alliance versus horde. Yeah. Like, yes. Oh my god, Dude, that's that would be King. amazing. Especially now that they're on PC, <laughs> I and yeah. with the next generation of consoles coming out within the next couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's and there's you know, going to be enough more power behind them to have like a full blown MMO. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because you know now that they they could potentially use a different engine or an updated engine going <laughs> forward that could support that. I do believe might be the case. Yeah, aren't they? Aren't they looking at swapping up engines for D three? Well, she's unreal forehead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that uh, a couple of the developers say that said that in their off off time they've been learning how to do stuff in Unreal, but I haven't heard much else otherwise right that'll be interesting to see yeah uh, they've been um, using they've been using this engine since what reach it's Halo been reach. a while it's been a long time <laughs> it's been a granted while. i remember looking back and seeing that havoc engine thing on like a bunch of halos yeah i remember saying that i was like you're still using that thing man still using that old engine i mean granted it's worked pretty well destiny's got some of the most immaculate shooting i think i've ever yeah. i've ever felt in any first person shooter but um yeah, maybe it's about time to upgrade that engine. The engine yeah. definitely has it aged. Yeah. Uh, depending on how well you want to say, I'll leave that up to you. If you <laughs> were to go back to Destiny 1, like after everything, uh, after Taken King, yeah. going back and doing that raid, you'd break the game entirely. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember the, the amount of gifts and everything, like where Cro- uh, Oryx is 100 feet, not in his spot, but like yep. halfway across the map and such. It's like, yeah, the engine was definitely feeling the crunch. So it'll be really interesting. D three is gonna be it's gonna be there's gonna be a lot riding on it, and there's 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 a lot there um, with with it being more of an RPG with a possible change in engine. We really have no idea what to expect from it. It's it's almost like a clean slate for the um, for the developers there at Bungie to work with. And I know I'm certainly looking forward to hearing more about it, and maybe that will be e this year. I think uh, Destiny is probably the one game that has cries out for, you know, cross play or cross save. And what did Unreal do? They like release that whole thing with like, hey, if you want to do cross play, cross save, here's how Fortnite does it. It's out here for free. Yep. And then all of a sudden, you know, Bungie self publishing. What's the smart move? Epic Store, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're there. Epic. Oh, man, the Epic. Everybody's jumping over to the Epic Store. And you know what? Competition. I love it. But yeah, cross save yeah. I think needs Maybe to be a thing. Maybe see an end to the um, console exclusivity. I think mm-hmm. it will because I, I with I, the I Activision believe, thing. I do believe no. yeah that was an Activision stipulation yeah. for for all the contracts that they had with Sony, which I mean, thanks for Bungie. Like two thirds of their player base are now being left out of yeah. certain content. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. I was never a fan of that. I was I was I was never a fan of that sort of thing of of. You you're basically being punished for buying the game on the wrong platform from yeah. uh, from from that standpoint. Yeah, in the future, hopefully that's not a thing. I don't see why it would be now that Activision's out of the picture. Um, cross save needs to be a thing. Like I want to be able to be, I want to be able to play my character on PC, and then when people want to play with me on PS4, I can just hop yeah. to that same character on PS4. Yeah, that's that's got to be. That, that's one of the big wishes. I think that's like the number one thing that I would want for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm like on 560 on PC right now. Yeah, I'm I'm on like the end of Curse of Osiris on PS4. Ain't no way oh. I'm finishing that out, going through Warmind, going through Forsaken, going through Black Armory. It ain't happening. <laughs> Not a chance. And uh, for the people out there who have like triple characters on three different platforms. How? How? This is my job. How do you do it? <laughs> what is like... That's burnout what, waiting yeah. to happen, man. Absolutely. No thanks. No thanks at all. Um, we've got a couple of questions. Easier, though, if, for if you like, if you focus on one platform and then go back and say some of your friends are still on that either console or PC, yeah, they can just help power level you up like crazy yes. going through. Yeah, that is true. the catch up mechanic too. Right now, in particular, it's not Better. super difficult, but 
still three story campaigns that I really don't That's a want lot to of content. Through. That's a lot of content to go through mm-hmm. to get caught up to yeah. where we are right now. A month away from another DLC release. Oof. It's going to be my favorite one probably coming up. Anyway, what was the question? Uh, big Squeak, a regular here, he says, you guys still have hope that SRL will come back? Maybe in D3, not in D2. Yeah, that's... You know, I'd be yeah. really surprised if they whip that one out. Yeah. Hey, maybe that's... Maybe it could be a thing that they, you know, Season bring in. of the holiday. Yeah, S- the closest the- you're going to get to that here is doing Scourge of the Past. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with the oh, I don't want to think there. about that. Oh, I hate that part the of that raid. I've never <laughs> done the raid. Nope. Oh, really? It. It's pretty fun. I recommend it. It's short and sweet. I might have to take you through that. It's 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 very short. Like it's it's very yeah. much like um. Shoot, you know, I was comparing it's it to Proto Satan. Short. Yeah, I was gonna say I was com- I, yeah. I was comparing it to Wrath of the Machine, but it's way shorter than Wrath. It, you can get yeah. it done in like fifteen Proto, minutes. I would say <laughs> it's, it's definitely minutes. Proto. Yeah, it, do mean, it. yeah, it's it, the only the only thing that really. I want to say take some most time in that raid is the final boss because mm-hmm. you just have to be on point in what you do because the white yeah. mechanic you know exactly hits pretty what you're fast. Doing. Although yep. it's it's not as it's not as strict as say Spire of Stars where it's like if one person yeah. messes up in one yeah. of the five different fail states mm-hmm. you have to start over. Yeah, you do have more leniency to uh, pretty to mess up. <laughs> you just have to like be really sure about the order of things. Yeah, that are happening. It's communication board. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a lot like um, the, the Axis fight. It's a, it's a communication thing. Yeah. There's a question over from on the Twitter side of things from uh, one of our content creators, Cribbuff, uh, for mm, Blessing. Crib buff. Um, oh. Tell us uh, about some of the lessons that you've learned from staying as a consistent co- uh, content creator. Uh, I would say um, just have fun with it. I think uh, the one thing that I faced was just kind of like burnout. I think, uh, like, anyone that could be, like, I've been making content since, like, 2015, and I talked to some guy at YouTube, and he was, like, making Destiny content for that long, man. I was like, yeah. And and he was, like, he related it to, like, man, I'd be looking for a new job. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you look at it like that, yeah, you'd probably be looking for a new job. But, um, yeah, just don't burn yourself out. Don't Don't go and try to do too much. Just have fun and just... Go out and have fun and make the content you want to make. Also, variety is a spice of life. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something that's hard to do. It's, it's, it's super weird, with, um, especially with, with channels that were primarily Destiny. Breaking yeah. out of that, that mold is hard. It is really hard because the returns just drop as soon as you put anything that's non-Destiny out. And um, that's why one of the people I've always been most impressed with is Mr. Fruit. Because he, oh, yeah. uh, he went through that a while back when he moved away from Destiny content and was able to push through and, and maintain his audience moving forward. And it's not easy. Like when you, when you yeah, venture yeah. out, there's another game that you're enjoying and making content for. And bless, I know you've got a lot of experience with this. And like you put out that video, like it's, it's hard to keep people interested in non Destiny stuff. And I don't know why. Like it's so weird because it's it, well, it, People it's, love Destiny, man. They do, yeah. It's it's like one of those things that hey my wife really loves RuPaul's Drag Race and she keeps up with every Drag Race contestant. I, it's her destiny, man. <laughs> so keep at it. Weird weird correlation, but yeah. Right on. Guardian Drag. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's some really awesome. I had one for uh, for Cronus actually. Sure. Right on. So, so I'm I'm fascinated with uh, with with you and this entire process of of making the the last word video and the voice work you've done for it. And um, I'm sure you, you we spoke before the podcast. You've got a lot of work going on, so you haven't been able to live stream too much. But one thing I always like to to pick our guest brains about is gaming and how they got into it. So what what was really what was really the experience with gaming that kind of brought you into the fold with it? Made it something that was uh something that was on your radar. In terms of voiceover? Oh, anything. What got you into gaming, period? Uh, gaming, I started very young. Like, uh, two, three years old. Uh, right back on. on the PS1. With games like uh, Croc. <laughs> yeah! Spyro, Crash. And the list goes on. But it was... 
I don't know. I, I I've gone through stages where I get burned out on games. I'll I'll yeah. go through periods of time where I'm just like, there. I either there's so many games I just don't know which one to pick, or there's so little games but so many in my backlog, and I'm just like, eh, I could get to that. But there are so, some games. There's a handful of games that I hold near and dear to my heart, and one of them is the Assassin's Creed franchise. It, the storytelling. Remember- in those games, I even with the newest like Origins and Odyssey, even though they've gone an RPG route now, I, I still am so fascinated by them. And I guess that kind of played into voiceover as well. It's like being able to show emotion and a storytelling experience just with voice alone. Sure, visuals heavily assist with, with that. But if you can invoke emotion from an audience, say uh, Assassin's Creed 3, where you see uh, Connor Kenway's uh, mother die in, yeah. in the attack on the village. Back when I was playing that, I was like, oh, shit, like, mm-hmm. that really hit hard. And it's that, it's, as long as you can get that physical and emotional reaction out of the audience, you've done a good job. That's Absolutely. That I've always aspired to, uh, to hit with my performances and 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 hearing the feedback and, and the criticisms uh, everything has been very humbling um especially hearing people saying like you, you know uh nem like gave you shivers or like chills down the spine or to know that i did invoke that feeling that that's a sign of i did i did something right Oh, you sure did. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say you nailed it. And um, I, yeah, I'm right there with you. I, um, video games, I absolutely do believe are an art form and the, the performances that go into these games can absolutely elicit uh, emotion. These characters are really brought to life by the voices that, uh, that, that carry them. I mean, shoot, I don't think anybody could look at something like maybe the Uncharted series and not think this is, this is acting. This is art. This is, this is, a story being brought to life in front of your eyes, and um, I would say that certainly happened in the uh, in the movie you all worked on. I, th- I think you all brought your characters to life, and so uh, you absolutely succeeded on that front, man. Absolutely, and um, I'm looking forward to hearing more from you, particularly in the future. So, how how exactly did you get pulled into Destiny then? Because you you were a D1 player. How did you uh, how did you get roped into that? As if it's a the, negative thing. <laughs> I mean, the amount of hours I put in Destiny 1, I think easily thousands. Yeah. Several thousand. Um, I was a beta player. When they did, uh, I want to say the open beta. Yeah. Before the D1 fully launched. And I was just, I, from that beginning, I was like, okay, this is something. Uh, with the loot grind, with the the raids and and seeing kind of like MMO systems being pulled and put into a a more console platform or or way of showcasing that. And then the story and everything just sucked me in. And and I'm sure with everyone else, it was like the story plus the, the loot grind and the memories that you make during that. It's like the first time you beat Volta glass. It's like, yeah. fuck yeah, I did. Yeah. First time yeah. 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 <laughs> drop of uh, Vex Mythoclast. Yeah, oh, man. No one else in your cl- in your team gets it, but you, and you're like, I, I got it. And they're like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you. Let's go to PvP right now. <laughs> what do you want me? I'll put you in the ground. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but nah, absolutely. Destiny 2, it was a bit of a hard start. With Destiny mm-hmm. 2. I don't know how many mm-hmm. others found that, but it was like all of the hope and promise of like Destiny 1 finished on a high. Yeah. I mean, to Destiny 2, I know a lot of people PvP wise were kind of like, eh, this need, like, needs a lot of work. But story wise, it, it's one of those that you can take a step back or you can take a step away from Destiny, come back when there's a lot more content out mm-hmm. and you have the time of your life. Yeah, absolutely. There was, um, I, I love getting the, fir- the Destiny first stories from, from our guests because it's always something different. 
But uh, there is there is one thread that is always the same, and it's the fact that they jumped into D1 often and experienced this game that took factors from MMOs, looter shooters from the, the, the loot grind, and kind of mixed it all into this one great playing game, and then threw in experiences like Vault of Glass, King's Fall, Wrath of the Machine, Rise of Iron, Taken King, all of that kind of stuff, and that it just hooks everybody into it. And um, that's something I really identify with because I was virtually the same. I had no interest in Destiny. Tried out the open beta, was like, I'm going to spend all my time on this because I was, I I was live hooked. I, I live here now. This is my house right here on the moon, first light. This is my house now. That's where I want to be. And um, it really is a, a very unique franchise. It's, uh, it's, got a, yeah. it's got an allure all its own. Really does. And, it's uh, done something for me that MMOs like World of Warcraft and others can't do, and that's keep me wanting to play. Yeah. Like with World of Warcraft, I'll. Uh, it's a shame that's a monthly subscription kind of deal, but I'll play it for like three days. And I'm like, eh. But with Destiny, it's like I'll grind this out for stupid amounts of hours a day. I take a small break. New DLC comes out, and immediately I'm right back in <laughs> same amount. Got to get that thorn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Better reclaim it. It's his. It's his. It belongs yeah, to you. Weekly resets. Just it is like yours. 10 a.m. or uh, 5 in the morning, Eastern time. And then <laughs> looking on LFG, like, all right, looking for a group. And oh, raiding. It's stupid at o'clock in the morning. <laughs> with, uh, with, with that fire team in vault and the one squeaker in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, squeakers! <laughs> the one squeaker in the back. <laughs> like, oh, I'm triggered. Like flashbacks. <laughs> oh no, dude! In year one, all I did was LFG, and I've had yeah. the worst stories. Oh my god! Oh, man. That's why I don't like raiding. Is because of year one of Destiny. I feel you. LFGs. The trauma is real. The trauma. You have the ragers. You have the squeakers. The ragers. You rarely have the nice guys. <laughs> it's when you you're LFGing for trials. Bad. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's one I thing like... I never did. You should know. Don't. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> I never LFG no. for anything trials in D1 or in D2. The only thing that I did LFG in D2 PvP wise was for comp, and I got incredibly lucky because I landed with this team of dudes that were nothing but chill. And this was for Luna's Howl, by the way. I, I started that comp session at like 900 points and I ended at like 2,000 points. And it was Not just bad. nothing. If we lost matches, you know, the dudes were chill. They weren't salty at all. But I, that was, I was like, all right, you know what? I got lucky. That's it. I'm not, I'm not touching PvP LFG anymore because uh, it's just going to ruin the that experience. That was your one like your one thing take, one and yeah. Yeah, take your, your win one time mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> i'm gonna push it quit while you're ahead yeah <laughs> like once a month you'd find that one raid team that everyone knew what they were doing and it was just like silenced it was like yeah quirk. just yeah. Yeah. straight in all right who wants to uh pull ogre gaze and, and who wants to uh trigger the bomb and everything it's like when you find that group you're like can we just do this every week? Yeah, just add me. Add me. <laughs> I never had to do that for raids. Actually, for King's Fall, the first time I did King's Fall, I got like somebody in the tower saw me. I was like, "Oh, so I didn't have any raid gear from want that. <laughs> do you want it?" I was like, "Okay," and they just like it. on point knew exactly what they were doing. That's awesome. Pretty great, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I, I I used to LFG a lot for D1 raids, and any time that somebody said something that was just <laughs> shitty or wrong or anything I, I just i wouldn't say anything just immediately out from the just fire team leave the yeah. party and just start over like i don't care what ch checkpoint i was oh. but I, I just i didn't put up with that kind of shit i wish way <laughs> constitution <laughs> actually just got wrapped up with a bunch of people who I didn't particularly enjoy, but Oof. man, yeah. <laughs> but now I'm here, so it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> I think that's one of the things Destiny 2 has had a bit of a rough time with is LFG. Yeah. Especially yeah, on sure. the PC uh, side of things, it's like... <laughs> you have like five people over there. 
<laughs> juiced from. There is a there's a, a Discord. A LFG Discord, yeah. And I use that for Last Wish a few times and it's been all right. You know, that's probably because you introduced me to that Discord too. That's probably been the most organized and easiest uh LFG kind of group I've ever had the experience of of being yeah. in. It's it's pretty quick. They're they're pretty professional there. The the poster room say, Hey, we're looking for Riven Rockets, join up. In there, out. It, yeah. uh, it, it's a far cry away from the horror stories of LFG back in year one of D1 where, oh my goodness, that was yeah. a nightmare and a half most of the time. Hey, does anyone have yeah. the Gorgon checkpoint? Yeah. <laughs> I want to go get the chest. Get that, get that chest, yeah. yeah. Then you'll have the you have there. to have Galar. You'll, you'll inevitably have one person. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I know how to do the fight. Gets in there. All right, guys. So I've never actually done this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I've seen videos, but I've never done it myself. We were learning from you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did any of you find yourselves being like the Sherpa? For yeah. Your no. Group? No. That, I, that's right. That's what I used to do for streams. I used to. I used to just raid Sherpa people. That was my thing. That taught really? me yeah. patience with many people. Oh yeah. <laughs> I am way too impatient, honestly. <laughs> Every now and again, I'd be there, like, "All right, you, you're you're not doing this correctly. You, you have to make sure that you get on this platform at this X Y Z time." And they'll do it, and they'll you'd have like two or three times where it's like, "And death, and death, and." Yep. But then when they when you see them, like, I got it. That means that I don't know if any of you guys have felt that. But it's like a, a bit of an accomplishment. Like, just yeah. tell someone something yeah. in a game where they may not have had anyone else try and teach them. That's that's what I love yeah. about it, you know, getting people their clears through like Wrath of the Machine and stuff like that where it's content that they thought they'd never be able to get done and uh, teaching them certain encounters. But there are definitely some frustrating moments where like there's just a person who cannot get their job done for whatever reason and it's like, "What are you dying from?" Brawl. Why? <laughs> <laughs> but why? why? Are you dying from brawl. But uh, yeah, like, like there's there's nothing like it, you know. Getting somebody there clear and then watching them get Crux of Crota first time, and you still haven't gotten yours on your hundredth clear. Bom, bom. <laughs> <laughs> get out of my fire team! Get out! <laughs> I think one of the highlights that I've had because when I first started with Planet Destiny, I started just straight through the streaming um, avenue of things, and I used to do like raids with viewers yeah. um and i think probably like the best experience i had with that is it was a week before um age of triumph was coming out so before they were updating the raids and i took a team and we were like all right well let's let's do the entire raid you know we'll do the bridge legitimately because we're gonna have to like learn it learn it and uh it, it was just kind of like, like Cronus mentioned, you know, where it was like clockwork. We were just, we went in there and we did the thing. And when we beat Crota, three of the people in there were like, wait, we just did that flawlessly. I just got my platinum. <laughs> and it was neat. It was such a cool feeling to help those, like, just in even, we weren't even trying to go for like flawless Raider, but no, three of them got their platinum that day. And I think that was probably That's like awesome. one of the highlights from, from that for sure. <laughs> I never got platinum. I never got that trophy. Flawless Raider. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> Crota like was a, definitely the easiest way. Sounds to like a stream it. idea, Bless. Let's get uh -oh. Bless Flawless. <laughs> I think I did it on. Uh, I think I got our. You know what? You're, you're right. I, I, I got my Flawless on Vault of Glass, and it was basically the same way. Mm -hmm. It was just yeah. one of the weeks when, when Nim, John, and I were running it, and we just had our crew, and we was, it, it, it's, it's a good feeling when you get that well oiled raid team. That yeah. doesn't even have to communicate. They just go into the encounter and then know two what minutes their job later, it's is. done. Yeah. And yeah, we were just playing it to get it done. And like at the end, Flawless pops up. Try and we're like, wait a second. We made it through <laughs> that whole thing easy. and Jay didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Jay. Feels, feels good. Feels good. And um, those are the kind of experiences I like. And I'm, I, I love doing that here in D2 because I like the raids in D2. I think they're all pretty good except Spire. Yeah. Uh, forget spire. I haven't done Spire. Don't. I have never touched it. Yep. <laughs> I do not plan to. <laughs> that that final yeah. boss fight is Which, so is ridiculous. Oh. It's the rain yeah, layer. I beat it once, yeah. I did I completed it once. That's enough. I don't need to do that the fight. Shadow carried again. me, thankfully. 
Oh man. <laughs> I can remember the world's first race. Oh no, that whole fight. There's like five different fail states in it, and yeah, that ain't it. Any of you guys getting a that jacket for last wish? (laughs) (laughs) Nah, no, not this guy. Mm -mm. No, may have to pull a few strings and be like, "Hey, that jacket." (laughs) <laughs> just just threaten them just which bungee employee tweeted when that that race was going on they were like that jacket is gonna look dope on that dragon <laughs> i know right yeah <laughs> yeah but then all cronus has to do is threaten them then he'll he'll get his jacket that's that's all the all that'll take <laughs> you wanna you wanna borrow you my thorn so you can you can do that come to life in the real world <laughs> offer a jacket darkness Give me that jacket. <laughs> it's got my name on it. I love it. It's beautiful. It's like so it, good, I want dude. it to happen. It's so it's good. So good. It's and, so good. Oh man, it does, you guys are all fantastic, and you did such a wonderful job. Back to that. Uh, back to that video. You all really brought those characters to life, and uh, just as somebody who got to sit on the sidelines and watch that be uh, watch that be made. Excellent work, everybody. Thank you all for that work and. and I hope you get to do it again because holy hell was that amazing. No, oh, thank you. Uh, Chris, can thank can you, you can you do me a solid before we end we end the show here? Can can you can you say that that line of when it's hungry, when the thorn's hungry? Because that was that's just ten out of ten. <clears throat> God, I gotta get really back into that mentality. <laughs> just imagine shooting Nim over and over again. Again. <laughs> God. I'm hungry. It's hungry. God damn it, that's so good! Oh, you, you know we can't leave it at that, though. Like, you know we can't leave... We have to get a yours, not mine from you no, and, no. From, oh. and from Blessius <laughs> now. It, it, it has to happen. We can't end this particular show without going through that. And Moon, you... Oh my god, there's so many lines I could make you say. He never... He never, oh, it has to be a he never misses. Do it. On. We're on. Do it. Nip, Moon, you first. You first. This is happening. Spires are forming as we speak. <laughs> no, I can't. No. <laughs> he never misses. <laughs> he never misses. I, mm, don't. Never miss. Don't you start mm. with me. Mm. Can't do this right now. All right. Third daddy Nim. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, bless. I can read the line. Leading into yours. <laughs> oh yes. I'm about to pull up grimoire cards oh. and we're about to do this. Oh no, we? I need grimoire cards. <laughs> oh, oh yes. This this is this oh, is the only way. This is the only way this episode could You have anticipated ended. this, Cronus. You said this was gonna happen. <laughs> I remember. Excellently played. This is beautifully played. Oh chat. Y'all are in for it now, chat. You in for it now. Give me all the pog champs you can muster. <laughs> Oh, chat. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm going to join in on the pog since I don't have to say anything anymore. I just get to oh sit back God. and wait. <laughs> you have the last word for it? Um, yeah, I see. There's a lot of text in this. I, I think it, it would be... Uh, <laughs> sorry. But there you are, truly an end. Is that it? Yeah, that's Thanks. Dredgen's last... Oh god, I'm nervous, man. I'm nervous. Do it. We believe in you. Every year in a while, the gunslinger's sword, his cannon, that was a gift. An offering from me to you. Nothing to say. I've been waiting for you. For this day. Many times I thought you'd faltered. Given up. But here you are. This is truly an end. Yours, not mine. Boom, boom. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, there we so go. Good. Oh, the sweet release. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Beautifully done.
<laughs> Daddy Nim, you want to get yours too? Are you kidding me? I can't tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I have last word or uh, thorn four up. I can't. I can't even. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Try clip it, really. hey, chat. Clip that and send yeah, it to me later. It. I'm gonna need to catch that a couple times later tonight. Mm. But there we go, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I could not think of a more perfect way to end episode 188 of the Planet Destiny podcast. This one has probably been one of my all-time favorites. We got some time to sit down and talk about a lot of really cool stuff tonight, and I just want to extend uh, gratitude and thanks to everybody who popped up on the show: Cronus, Bless, Moon, Nim. Thank you all so much for uh, for being here, and thank you guys so much for thank the work you. that you put into this. It's um, it's it was an incredible bit of work, an incredible film that you guys put out, and um, I agree with Chat. If they ever give voices to these characters in the future, like y'all had better be the first people they call because <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. But before we get out of here, we are going to go around the uh, around the table, let you guys know. Or uh, let the let our host let you guys know where they are at across the internet, what they've got coming up. Starting with Mr. Cronus, because he's got a lot of stuff. You should go check him out everywhere. He's got a SoundCloud. He's got a professional website. Go listen to this man talk. He does it really well. Mr. Cronus, if you want to take some time, let people know where they can find you. I feel like he's about to shoot Nim again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Um, <laughs> I keep doing that. Yeah. Um, Twitch.tv forward slash Connor Cronus. Um, I'm trying to figure out a schedule to get back into everything. Um, but if you want to check out my voiceover, I've cur- currently signed to an NDA, so I can't talk about certain things. But uh, 2019 is, is going to be an interesting year. And I'm, one, I'm, it's only just started. And to already see the, the feedback and response from the the, the, the thorn and, and the last word video has been phenomenal i'm very much looking forward to seeing what the uh, the rest of the year has in store but uh feel free to head to connorcronus.com uh, that'll take you over to my portfolio site and uh don't send me virus emails <laughs> <laughs> No more fishing. Don't sign me up for certain medication either. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Yeah, I oh. saw many of those earlier today. So, uh, be better. Don't look, kill him in the crucible. Not in his emails. Stop it. <laughs> and um, I, I do have to say, like you know, as as a voice actor, it's generally a good idea to keep your demo reels up to date. I cannot wait for your next character reel because it had better have some dredge in your lines in there. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> Dredgen, Radagast, a uh, couple other characters that I have in store as well. Right on. There's some links to that in chat. Go check this man out. He is incredible. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for inviting me. Right on. Bless, where you at, man? What you got going on? Well, you can find me on Twitter, uh, just at Blessius Plays, and then on YouTube and Twitch, just search Blessius. Simple. <laughs> what have you um what have you been streaming as of late? I know a lot of Kingdom Hearts and uh Um that anthem and uh tomorrow that new uh, uh BR from Respawn. <laughs> oh no, no. We didn't talk that about came that. Came out but... of nowhere. Oof. I hope it's at least good. Mm. Yeah. I hope so. Rest in peace. I hope so. Yeah. Ugh. Moonvald, what's going on? Not a whole lot. Uh, you can find me at twitter.com slash twitch.tv slash moonvald. About it right now. Yeah. Right on. Nim plays. At Nim plays. Thank you. Yeah, there you got it. <laughs> That's there you go. Brought to you by TBL this week. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you have to change some of your, some of your, uh, some of your descriptions to, yeah, I got shot by Thorn. The guy who got killed oh my by God. Thorn. Yeah. That's true. Got it. <laughs> Embrace the Jaren Ward. You get to be third. You get to be third daddy. Oh God, third that's dad. it. Third daddy. My third new, dad. Can we petition for a new a new Twitter handle for Nim at Big Third Daddy? <laughs> no. Oh yes. Oh no. yes. Chat. You're, you're controlled. Immediately us now. fired from PD. <laughs> yeah, Both I'm a Big Third Daddy. <laughs> you could call me Third Daddy. <laughs> you, you know, he just needs a title, like an in-game title. Third. Daddy. Just him. 
third daddy. My third father. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And of course, I'm the Black Link. You can find me pretty much everywhere on the internet. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all at the Black Link. We'll be having you know, the usual stuff, coverage, live streams. I don't know what I'm going to play this week. I don't really feel like streaming Destiny, so we'll see. <laughs> Maybe I'll be doing a Titanfall uh, Battle Royale. Who knows? Do it. Uh, join the dark side. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Battle Royals with parkour. <laughs> parkour Royal. Mm. But all right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 188 of the Planet Destiny podcast. Truly one of my favorite shows thus far. And um, again, thank you guys so much for showing up. And um, <laughs> I cannot wait to see what happens in the future. You guys did incredible work with that, uh, with that video, that, that movie, that documentary, that epic of Destiny lore. And um, very, very well done to everybody here. And of course, to uh, My Name is Bife, who worked so yes. hard for years yeah, all of this really got to shout out Bife on that one. He put his heart and soul into it, and it shows, so. And I, I, I hope it gets all the recognition in the world, because it, it's a project that really deserves it. Well done, everyone. Right now, it's sitting at, like, quarter of a million views. Oh, it had better yeah, it hit is. one mil. It had better hit it, because that's a video that deserves to be seen. Like, if that doesn't get you interested mm. in Destiny lore, you don't actually exist. I'm sorry, to, <laughs> sorry to let you know you got thorned a long time ago, but um, <laughs> again, thank you guys so much for being here and uh, wonderful, wonderful job. But that's it for the show. We'll catch you guys next Ooh. week. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>